Okay, uh, welcome everyone. This is Courage and Chaos. Uh, this is Dungeons and Dragons for Absolute Beginners. Uh, everybody here at this table was completely new to D&D just a few sessions ago. Uh, I'm playing level one characters in the classic Forgotten Realm setting. And our big thing here is teaching people how to play D&D. So it's really important that you stop and ask questions because somebody else at the table or even somebody watching the video might have that same question. So never be afraid to say, I'm confused. Also help each other out. You know, when someone rolls a die, take a look at your neighbors. You know, make sure your neighbor's adding something to the die. That's a classic thing. Sometimes I've seen people, oh, I went for three sessions without realizing that I was, I was supposed to add something to the die. Um, so neighbors can catch that. And you know, explaining things like that. Um, so that's uh, my goal is mainly teaching. Uh, and we're just a few sessions in. One of the other things is just your mission here is to expose you to different kinds of D&D. So I want to give you, you know, D&D is many games within the game, and I'll deliberately give you a lot of variety, different styles of combat, different amounts of role playing and puzzle solving and all that, and it's okay to not like everything. What I'm doing is giving you experience that when you go to another game, another DM, the DM will often ask, oh, how does everybody feel about each of these elements of the game? And then you'll have some experience to say, oh, this is something I like a lot of, this is something I like less of. Um, so I'm deliberately giving you some eclectic experiences there. Uh, and um, the goal is to make you able to go to any D&D table. I really encourage you to go to another group. I think this, you know, you're learning rapidly. I think within a few sessions you'll have certainly all the basics. And I really don't mind if people move on. Um, the table is rather large. It's great that you're still coming here, and I'm not going to push anybody out. But you'll notice this is quite a large table, and you might start feeling like it's going a little slow for you. In which case, it does not hurt my feelings for people to move on to another group. But that said, I'm really glad to have you here. Uh, so do mention that. Uh, also, one scene that we would have done last time to do a flashback is what happened with the character Amos, uh, who, who has joined us here. So Amos healed Thogram. Thogram was the one in academic robes, uh, the half-orc who was in uh, the Cobalt Jail, was dragged away, tortured, dragged back, bleeding out. And Amos was thoughtful enough to say, like, hey, well, how's Thogram doing? Uh, and so as a result, Thogram was like, I'm so grateful, just talking, I'm so grateful to you. It was like, I, that torture, it's like I couldn't have held up anymore, but, you know, hey, can I tell you something? I mean, I owe you my life. I really appreciate it. I mean, I've got, I've got a very important mission, and, you know, this torture that I was undergoing, um, there's a reason why I didn't talk. You know, if, uh, if, if I actually told them what I know, I, I would have had a lot worse than torture, right? So I'm going to tell you something that, that, you know, maybe if I can trust these other people, they can find out as well, because I trust you. So, you know, I know why uh, they, uh, I know why all of you are wondering what's up with that orrery, right? You know, the big spears and stuff like that, that the kobolds are worried about, that they really want to know the answer to. I know that none of you have the orrery. You know why I know that? Because the orrery is mine. That's mine. But it's very important that the kobolds do not figure out how to use it, right? Okay. You can figure out how to use it. I think that's fine, right? That's good. But... Do not let them know. Very important. Uh, it's, it, and I'm working for somebody, I can't tell you who, but it's, it's very important. Now, I would love to get a hold of it again, but you know, I know you probably got your own agendas. It's very useful if you know how to use it. I'm happy to, I'm happy to show you how, as long as you promise that you know, you're going to use it for, for the right reasons. But we'll talk more about that later. Okay, so you've got a very thankful Thogram, and she is going to follow you if you want her to. She's now officially your follower. Just you personally, she, she has your life. Uh -huh. You have a choice here. You can park her in any given room. You can say, oh, you want to keep her here in the Cobalt Machine Room, which I know you're not aware of. You, you just start after a bit of an absence. By the way, your character has been following the group this whole time. You just weren't very heroic. You, you kind of lost your heroic Sounds spirit bad. for a while. <laughs> yeah. they, uh, you know, maybe you stabbed a Cobalt once or twice in the background. Uh, but you're now feeling heroic again. So you've been along this whole time. You can park Thogram back in the jail, you know, uh, because now that the kobolds are sort of cowed and they're allies, that might be a safe place. You can keep uh, her in the machine room. She can tell her to stay in the machine room. Later on, you actually be able to give her a job, but we'll get to that later on. She can do things on your behalf. Or, by default, she can follow you around from room to room. She'll put herself in danger that way, to some degree. She won't be fighting or anything, but there's a chance that she'll die if he's following you around. But also, she might intervene at very critical times. Um, this is upside down. Upside down dragon. Um, so uh, I won't give details, and it differs from follower to follower, but you might find that at times when you most need her, she, she might make good on you, know, you, uh, you owing uh, the life. Um, so do you want Thogram to follow you from room to room, or do you want to park Thogram in a particular spot? It's your decision. All right. Um, what did I miss? Uh, did, did anything about Thogram 
come out last week. That's so the main thing is mm -hmm. knowing about the or yeah, has, has vital knowledge about the or. Oh, no, 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 no. Is someone did. <laughs> like, I don't. I, I I feel like everyone here knows more yeah, about like, the story really. so far than so I do. Think so like, everyone was mostly just okay. a. We're sort of going so to buy is it. everyone okay with Ogrim following? Yeah. Or is it like, yeah. oh, she's bad news yeah, nice like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 The good thing also, she'll observe things as she goes, so, so later on, if you want to investigate things, you can draw from her things that she's interested in. Great, great. All right. That sounds right. really good. Just keep her away from awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Stay, stay back. Yeah, yeah. So she won't. She'll get in trouble. Uh, so there are only certain circumstances under which she'll get trouble. Basically, if you're in great trouble, you think she'll she'd risk her life for you. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. Okay. Now, usually I would describe the scene as it is. You are in the Cobalt Machine Room, but we have some action uh, that immediately breaks out. You might remember that last time you were being attacked by uh, a dragonborn, a black acid dragonborn with a black dragon skin uh, and a dragon snout. Very much like Saide is a dragonborn, but gold colored. This one was uh, black colored. And you know that her name was, um, was Havilar. And Saide actually uh, has a mission to rescue Havilar as a fellow dragonborn, uh, knew that Havilar was captive, and that might be something that you find out more about as you investigate. But Havilar was crazy and uh, was using this mech to attack you all, saying, get the shard, get the shard, get the chaos shard, and just seemed to think, you know, sense that there was a chaos shard in the room, because that was true, some of you had chaos shards, and just fixated on some of you. Killed nearly one of you, the guts got spilled out, uh, but out of chance, once the shocking grasp opened up her protective cage, had the option to kill Havilar. I said, you can just go and slit her throat and it's over, or you can go back to fighting the mech itself. Decided to keep her alive, perhaps remembering that Saide was, uh, we had said something about, I'm here to rescue Havilar. However, uh, by the end of the fight, Havilar was still alive and hostile. So it's almost as if combat, it's really like combat is continuing, but there's one particular opportunity that happens here. So as you remember, uh, Saide and who else was up in the, n the machine nest? Yes, that's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. So the two of you were, were up there in the control room, essentially. And as you look down over here, the, the two of you see that uh, Havilar is still a threat, but you, s you figured out enough about the remaining machinery that you didn't destroy that you can quickly... Uh, operate some levers and sort of hook her and try to pull her up off of the ground. So she, it looks like it would, it would make her rise up so you know, she can only reach so far. So it would loop her up out of the ground and there would be no danger. However, she'll do a saving throw, right? Just like anything, any has a chance to, to evade the chains or just the chains, you know, just slip off of her. If that happens, then she'll probably keep attacking. That's just the idea they have. So there's a risk that she'll keep attacking if you try to take, the, take this chance to loop her up. But if you loop her up successfully, she'll almost certainly be preserved and alive. Another moral choice. Quickly, now I, I'd say uh, you, the, the, this is your decision. I, think, I don't think it's such, so dire that the group would like vote you out for doing one or the other. So unless someone has a huge objection, like you absolutely, like I insist that you kill her, you can all speak out now. But the two of you get to make the decision about whether you're going to operate the chains to try to lift her up and out at the risk that she might continue attacking, uh, or just, you know, uh, uh, let, her get, get, let her get dispatched by, uh, by, by, by the, the crowd here. No, I think we're trying, because your mission was to save me, so um, definitely, yeah. Well, What's the worst that could happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So do you agree? We'll, 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 we'll start. Get try to rescue her, so yeah. instead of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. take a chance of rescuing her at the risk of where okay, she might still hurt the team. I would like to have a way of restraining her. Yes. Yes. Right yep. Now. That's what this She's happened. really mad. Yeah. She's crazy. Yeah. She's yeah. under influence of. Yeah. This will restrain her. It's just that she'll make a we saving throw. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. We can restrain her. Yeah. Okay. So the two so of you operate. I want to restrain her. Yes. Yeah. 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 To operate the leaders, try to restrain her and see if she makes her saving throw, which she fails. She is lifted up in the air. So her, she's thrashing out with that that sort of drill and that pneumatic hammer against the people that are right next to her, but. She's pulled out of range just in time as the chains suspend her. And she's thrashing and cursing and trying, but she seems very well restrained. She's suspended a good 20 feet above. So she'll continue to try to get free, but you can tell, especially you know, you'll operate with more chains, and she's very well secured. We'll just put a pin in that. That means that later on when you get to make a move or the investigation, you know, you have options to kind of go into the mode where you're changing things about the world, investigating things. Remember, she's there. I'm not necessarily going to remind you. She's now captive there. But if you want to get to her, that is now happening. Okay, great. So, so does okay. that mean we're all out of... Yes, you're now out of combat. Yeah, exactly. Captain. Okay. 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 Okay
Does that mean someone right. can try to save me because so I'm on zero hit points right now? Yeah, so let's say assume that you're stabilized um, with that, but uh, but that's that's something that you'll want to do. And you'll, you'll want a short rest, which we'll go to in just a minute. The other thing to uh, think about is BB is up there. Remember, BB was helping by having a visor on his head. Sort of weird smoke was coming up behind. It's like, yeah, I'm 20 feet tall. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm defeating everything. I'm super powerful. I'm the hero. He's just basically just kind of thrashing around the ground, looking into this visor, sort of pawing at the air, babbling incoherently, obviously hallucinating some sort of hero scenario. And he's just talking about what a great hero he is and how he's powerful and he's the hero, he's the rescuer of the day. This is obviously not true. Um, as as you know, he sort of comes to. At one point, you know, he your presence startles him. And he's like ah ah bees bees bees, and he he goes out and like runs in a panic. And he he with the visor on, he hits the side of the the nest, and his visor pops off and it falls down to the machine floor. And you can see his skin is red and blistered and smoking, and his eyes are just glowing this this weird greenish you know gold color. And he's just sort of looking around. He still seems to be just really freaked out and hallucinating. He was a tweak, he's tweaky before, he's super tweaky now. But his visor has gone off, he's like, ah, ah, ah. he's still like reaching around, like, where, where, where'd it go, where'd it go? This is obviously valuable to him, but it's obviously the source of his craziness. It has fallen on the floor. If you want to pick up this visor and take it for yourself, roll a 20, you, not you two in the nest, because you're up there, anybody who's not in the nest, you two, roll a 20-sided die now. Whoever is the highest 20-sided die gets the visor, and you'll, you'll put an inventory. So roll if you wish. Is just splitting up treasures. So you have a you have a pact to split up treasure yeah. like this. Yeah. Does that include me on this one? Uh, it is just yeah. fine. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. yeah let's, oh no, you're no. Sorry, you're down. Yeah. Eh? You're so, no, sorry. <laughs> it's probably for the. Thank best. you for asking. <laughs> okay, the highest was you. Yep. Okay, so please write silver visor, and uh, just put BB on it. It's it's not super well made. It looks like almost handmade in a way, but it is made of a very bright silver metal. And just at a glance, yeah, it looks like. From the inside, it looks completely opaque, but it's got like a little socket inside, and it really smells of real, like a ozone sort of electrical sort of burn smell, and the smell of burned flesh as well. Put it on. <laughs> <laughs> no, sure. Yeah, just become, it on. Uh, <laughs> become an evil cleric. Yes, yeah, so we like have that. that. Well, technically, he didn't start tweaking until he got into the nest as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's he he was sort of freaky before, but he's super freaky now. Okay. The kobolds, in the last thing, you turned them into allies, very happy allies. You really succeeded, remember? You did so well that you really tilted them to a strong ally state. Uh, so they're quite happy and numerous, uh, and they can do jobs for you. Uh, we'll get to that when we get to the, and the next session. is going to be investigation and world building. So this is something you might choose to harness them as allies. But one of the most natural, one of the most important things is you can trade with them. They are now vendors. So I'll describe that in a minute, and I'll post something on Meetup about how to buy things from the kobolds. You can just do it kind of as homework in between the two sessions. You can decide that you've bought various equipment by looking things up mm -hmm. online. Uh, I'll describe that myself. Dak Dak, as you recall, was your advocate for being the, uh, the allies instead of fighting them. And Dak Dak is very cheerful. It's like, yeah, oh, oh, good. Oh, do steel deal? Ah, steel deal, good. Steel deal, ah, so yeah. So he's explaining once again steel deal to kobolds that don't quite understand the concept, but he's understanding uh, that the trade is going to give the kobolds coins and you get equipment. So he's happily discussing that. In this moment, we'll zoom in on each of you by going around. Uh, and remember when I call you all, you, all I'm asking you to do is just say one thing about your character is like the first thing that we might notice right away. You know, like what's something that we would see um, about you. Um, it's an emotional state, maybe just something about your appearance. Just one sentence as we zoom in. So I'll gesture at each. We have, um, we have Anthony. Anthony is playing Gammy, who is a halfling rogue level one. Uh, so, what's something we was Gammy look like or is feeling like at this moment? A bedraggled. Good, exactly. Sometimes one word is all that ha all that Very needs. Good Very good. <laughs> we have Saryeth, uh, who's Olive, uh, Oliver. So I forgot who Oliver is. Oliver is playing Saryeth. Uh, he is a high elf wizard, level one. Uh, what do we notice about Saryeth? Saryeth is throwing up a panic in the corner of the room. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. I think you've written a coward on your, on your card. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Sean is playing Shu Dian. Uh, Shu Dian is a human fighter level one. What do we notice about Shu Dian? Impatient. Okay. All right. Good. I like these nice, succinct things. They're nice mental images. And the great thing about D&D is you visualize this as much as possible. It gets very immersive the more that you do this. Uh, Michael is... Uh, Michael is Fogrim. 
who is a Dwarven Cleric level one. Um, so what does what we know about Fogrim? Uh, Fogrim is gruff and grumpy and very pragmatic as an ex-soldier. Okay, right. So he's obviously making plans for what to have next. Like, okay, enough of this. You know, we're going to we're, we're put our plans into action. Yeah. Right on. Good, good. Uh, Mimosa here is playing Saide. Saide is a Dragonborn Paladin, level one of a gold color. Uh, what do we notice about Saide at this moment? It's different from usual. She doesn't trust me, Havila, and you know, as a soldier, she wants to really restrain Havila. Ah, uh -huh. I have a lot. Because she doesn't trust her right now. Yeah. She's like, no, she's affected by something and. That's something that's not good. Yes, yes. One thing I didn't mention actually is uh, mention that when you sort of looked over in Havilar, uh, when we looked over Havilar, she identifies like you have a crest on your chest. She has a crest, you know, uh, you can see she had very tattered clothes. Mm. And you can notice there's like a scrap of family crest. Mm -hmm. And there's some sort of reaction, you know, like there's some a hostile reaction. Is it just mm -hmm. because she's crazy? But you know that clans are very important with Dragonborn. Mm -hmm. So she seems to recognize your clan and, you, and is now is mad at you in particular, uh, yes. not, just, uh, not just crazy. So that might be something you explore later on. Where did yeah. she come from and what clan? Connection. Okay. That was great with side A. Uh, Olenka is playing Shmagrid. And Shmagrid. 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 Ah, okay. Shmagrid. I'll do, I'll do the capitalization the other way around. I was going to say, type it if you need to make it um, <coughs> phonetic for yourself. I am. The, Shmagrid. The syllables are the Shmagrid. Okay. Shmagrid. Three syllables. Well, no, it's, it is two, but... Shmagrid. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll keep an easy mode. Shmagrid. Yeah. Uh, they are a Dwarven Cleric level one. Yes. And what do we notice about Shmarakt? Um, So short, stout, very fastidious about their armor and their appearance. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Polishing up a little bit after that fight. Yeah. Uh, Belinda uh, is playing Elam. And Elam, she is a human fighter level one. What do we notice about Elam? Um, she's way too optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> is she oversharing something in particular right now? Um, nothing important, but definitely <laughs> annoying all the kobolds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Uh, Steven uh, is playing Vol. Uh, he is a human fighter level one. What do we notice about Vol? He's bloody and unconscious right now. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything visually that, uh, that we notice besides all the blood? Well, just more more of it than they normally would be. Messing the floor. Guts. <laughs> it's on the outside oh, of the body. Right. So so the so so There's <laughs> too many guts out. Exactly. We Alan can't, we can't hold it. Uh, is yeah. here, uh, has, has, has rejoined the group after being uh, in the Cobalt Jail with you, is now, is now reactivated in heroic mode. Uh, he is Amos, and Amos is a cleric level one. Uh, what do we notice about Amos? Uh, I guess I'm looking a little bit uh, Amos is looking a little bit uh, nervous-ish because of the visor. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems both powerful and don't right. know what it is. And, yes. and it's just in my bag. And that's a good <laughs> yeah. one. So okay. I'd say that'd be it. Very good. Very good. All right. Thanks, everybody, for adding a little bit of color there. So here we all are. Okay. So, you've got a bit of time pressure. The gnolls were mentioned last time, and the gnolls are like their customers, as far as you can tell. Like the gnolls are the ones who take the mining machines and maybe are conducting the mining, and they're coming soon, and the machine shop is in total disarray because of all the blasting that's been happening from both sides. So, they're panicking that the gnolls will be here soon and are, are expecting these machines to be ready, and they also point at Havilar, like including her, you know, with Havilar struggling there, but she's all banged up. So, even if you wanted to hand her over to the gnolls, she's in no fit, uh, service to to do it. So uh, they also want you to get to Jop Jop. Like, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Jop Jop, Jack Texas. Uh, Jop Jop also has, uh, you know, like special bots uh, that if you can convince her to like bring them out, the bots can, you know, <clears throat> you know, shoot at the gnolls and sort of keep them at bay, you know, like make the gnolls not want to attack us. It <laughs> might buy us some time. So if you're back uh, talking to, to Jop Jop, you know, uh, tell her that we, we got a bit of a gnoll problem. That would be great. So adding to your motivation rather quickly to try to get through that area. But you're looking again at that spot and uh, that silver keyhole. I have no idea how to get through there. Uh, and But Dak Dak is going to solve that problem for you. However, you just had a battle. You can do a short rest. Who here is down quite a few hit points? Okay. So a short rest gives you hit points back. It won't give you your spells back. Uh, it will do things to your warriors if you have a tick mark on your second wind. 
So second wind is something that you can only spend once per short rest. You will be able to erase that tick mark, so you get a bit of, of, of a revive. And of course, your second wind, as soon as you're done with the short rest, you, you'll, you'll get your second wind back. So if you haven't used your second wind as a, as a fighter, so if you're a fighter, you can, you, if you haven't used it yet, you can right now give yourself second wind. That is rolling a d10. If somebody knows dice very well, it can pull that out, but it's, uh, it, it doesn't have, it has non-regular non polygons for its face. Uh, uh, and you add one, so you, you roll a uh, d10 and add one. Who else here is, is a fighter? So you all of that. Uh, you can't go back to your maximum, so no, no, not, not for you. Uh, uh, we'll get to that in a moment. So, oh, sorry. Yep. Well, I'm just talking to fighters right now. Oh, They're only fighters. Yeah, so if, if you haven't used your second wind, there's no tick mark on the second wind yet. Okay, so yeah, you can do it as well. So you'll use their D10. So to get my full mm -hmm. you, Well, you get quite a few back. So unfortunately not you. The paladin wouldn't have it. Only the true, the, the, the basic <coughs> fighters do. So roll that and add one because you're a level one fighter. Oh, that's got tens on it, but just knock it off. Just no zeros. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So add five. Five. So you get six hit points back. Mm -hmm. Add six hit points right now, but don't go past your maximum. Okay. Now you that, have another that, fighter who that's probably doesn't have. Have you used your second wind? I haven't used my second wind. You're still wind unconscious, now. however. Yeah. That's the problem. So <laughs> somebody needs to actually heal them in order to bring them back. Does anybody have a healing spell There's or a good berry people. or a potion? <laughs> That can do that. Or this is where uh, lay on hands by the paladin. You can give away one hit point, which is enough to let you use the second win. That might be a good thing. <laughs> no, I'll give, I'll give away one hit point. Because Very I'm good. Okay, so side A lays hands on you with the holy power going into you. You now have one hit point. Woo! And now yes. you're conscious. Now yeah, you can use your second yeah. win. Very good. And side A, uh, you're, you're marking that down somewhere. Yes. And you have five to spend per one. Oh, yes. I think. Can I grab that? Oh, and so. yeah, last for Elam, uh, you rolled that. Oh, you rolled a D12 there, unfortunately. So oh. they're all very confusing. There's I another one. Uh, somebody D12? handy. Yeah, that's fine. No, no, this is just a D10 on oh, this one. Uh, you are right that D12 come in handy for other things. Okay, so, so now you gain eight hit points. Seven plus one, one for because you're a level one fighter. So, so you gain so eight so hit points. One but from the one because I'm level one and whatever I got. Yes, yeah, so okay. you roll that and just add yeah. one because you're a level one fighter, and that's how second wind works. Okay, <laughs> that's, right. that's good. That's Normally, good. I'd ask you to tick that box that says second wind, but you're just about to do a short rest, and you'll just be erasing it again. Yeah. But just be aware that you can what that trick you did. You can do that during battle, by the way. So you can take a, you can do it as a bonus action. You can both attack and do it. So it's very handy. You can heal yourself as a fighter. It's one thing that makes you such great tanks. Okay. Now, those of you who don't have that benefit, you want, uh, who at least some people still want to give themselves hit points? So do more people? Okay, yes. So, now we'll talk about hit dice. We might have done this briefly before, I can't remember. So, hit dice is a resource that you spend. So, on your character sheet, right below, and again, you'll want to get rid of this top sheet. The 1d8 or whatever. Yeah, so right below where it says hit points and temporary hit points, it says something like 1d8, 1d6, 1d10. That's the die, so the number is, is the size of the die that you roll. <laughs> and you have one of them. As no, nobody's crossed out and put zero, I don't think we've done a short rest yet. No. This is an option that you have, so you spend that, so you have one hit die to spend. If you decide to spend it, first of all, you, you, you reduce it by one, so you put a zero down there. You roll that die, so like you would roll a D, D8, but you as a fighter would roll a D10, you as a cleric would roll a D8, etc. And you add your constitution bonus, so the big number for constitution on the left side. It's your option. Now, of course, you can't go past your maximum. So if you're down by only hit one or two hit points, you might not want to, to spend it. But otherwise, it's a good idea to spend it. So if you choose, roll a hit die, and neighbors help each other out. So look at, that's a d20, so you want to roll your hit die size. Oh, no, no, sorry. I, no, that wasn't what I said. Do we need to do this? Now before the no, short it's rest? Exactly. It's, it's part of your short rest. No. So yeah. so you, you decide to do this, and by the time the short rest is over, you'll have gained this. Well, I need to roll because yeah, so I basically you do it now. Left, so I can't build myself. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. So, so I've only got five hit points. Because I'm on five out of 11, so I don't know if it's worth oh, really yes. It's a gamble. Oh, dear. Wow. Okay, yeah, so you sometimes you roll a one. Be sure you add your, your constitution yeah. bonus to that. Yeah. So this is... this this. this this healing would be part of our short rest. Yeah, so part of your short rest. We wouldn't I, I be able to get more hit points until our next long rest. That's right, exactly. Yeah, long rest gives you all your hit points back and a hit die back, but I very much advise that you, unless you're already <coughs> down one or two points, it's a very good idea to use your hit dice. You don't want to die with hit dice on your page. It's just not, it's not good. All right. Hand me a D8, please. Okay. So you can roll the D8 and add your constitution bonus. Anybody else got questions about using that? Your lay on hands, ah, you can use on yourself, you can push yourself. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, did you? 
That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. I'm only missing one hit point. So that's a case where you might yeah. want to save it. But yeah. also, yeah. you yeah. have yeah. 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 two spell slots. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you got some spell slots and all that stuff. And one of them is about healing. So one of these later on, you can be able to. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yes. I'll have to learn on the fly with that, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I, would, I would actually recommend, I would recommend that you roll it because you've got spells for big healing. And those okay. This is just a good way to talk yourself. Sometimes one hit point is all the difference making. And you get a little bit of practice. Okay. So go and, and do uh, as, as your neighbor did. Let's go. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go and help each other out. Yeah. Anybody else have questions? Uh, so yes. Three points. Points. Oh. Oh. You got three, yes. I, I, so I don't yeah, want to say it. So you're going to roll with something. Yeah. 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 Quite interesting. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. only one. Oh, uh, 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 rest. Oh, uh, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Please. So now that you've used it on short rest, we won't be able to use it again until we've had a long rest. So that's why I was checking whether it's worth it because I was on five out of eleven. That's the one good point. Yeah, yeah, I think you made the right decision. Right. 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 That's the thing, because I was just on half rest. You can't go past that. You can only do this on a short rest. This only happens on a short rest. Because long rest automatically resets out. Yeah, long rest does everything. And we only get one short rest a day? Uh, no, you can take short rest as long as it's as many times you want, because that's, that's what you can. So, so basically, yeah, we've got no hit dice left. Right. 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 So you'll get it back when you do a long rest. Long yeah. rest. Yeah. Yeah. Come back on a long rest. Okay, that was my next question. And right. one advice that, that, you, that I might have mentioned or not is, you know, the adventuring day is your main unit. So what you do is you kind of get a feel for like, you know, you think, right right now you've got time pressure. Like, you can't take a long rest because you know about the gnolls coming and all that stuff. But usually, just to talk metagaming here, Usually after you have two or three fights, you usually get a chance for a long rest. Most DMs will give you a chance for a long rest. So you best you kind of gauge that. So we got our first long rest after the after the battle. We kind of got a magical the big one in the dungeon. Yeah, that's right. Um, we, we did that one. So and then this has only really been our second. Yeah, so you're about to do a second session. You know, second battle. We had the, the battle of wits. Yes. With the pros and cons. Yes. Yeah, but that wouldn't have damaged you. So yeah. So we've only really had two physical battles. Yeah. So so typically at this point, you imagine have two or three damaging battles before you get a chance for long rest because there's only so much urgency you'll be able to put up and is the dragon one lady still dangling? She is, yes, yeah, yeah. During that hour, she's, 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 she's kind of settled down a little bit, but she still knows there's a chaos shard. She's like, get the shard, get the shard. She sort of wakes up and but she's safe. Yeah. Uh, safe, safe, safe. Okay, let's move on. No, I think here. And at the break or at the pub, or if you have any questions about your character, come early. You know, I can also answer questions if you come a little early. So you get like a pool of health. Um, no. Shall we continue? Yeah. The light just of hands. We, yeah, we just want to make sure about, hmm? about this one. Does it use a spell slot? No, it does not. No, it just uses the... the yeah, just, yeah just, it just drains does, that five. It takes yeah. it one from special So yep. now I have yeah. four. Now you have four left. Yeah. 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 Four left to dispense. Yeah, okay. yeah. that's what, that's what I've recorded. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, good. good. Very good. Yep. 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 And does it come back on a long rest or a short rest? As, uh, does it recharge long on, rest. on a long rest? Yeah. Yeah. Almost, yeah, long rest. Yeah, yeah. quite powerful on well, a short rest. Very good. Okay, so to review, you've yeah. taken an hour where you sort of patch up your armor, you psych yourself up, meditate a bit, you know, patch up your wounds. Hit points are more than just the amount of blood in your body. They're your fighting spirit, how sore your muscles are, how good your armor is, how scared you're feeling. You know, so you've kind of psyched yourself back up. And this is very special. You, as a hero, nobody you know before today could do this, but you know stories of heroes who can do this. Most people, if they get injured, they have to wait days before they're back, you know, to, uh, before they gain any health at all. You're special. Just checking with the um, spell slots as yeah. well. Um, so I've written per day. Is each long rest equal to a day? Yes. The, like the time yep. periods between That's long right. rest. Yeah, long rest ends in a duel. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Yeah, those of you keeping track of spell slots, it's nice. I'm not going to be too harsh on it right now, but eventually we'll, we'll, we'll tighten things up where you're keeping track of your spell slots being spent. That's on the very back of your character sheets where you track that if you're a spellcaster. But don't worry about it too much. I'll know if you're if you're casting powerful spells every turn. I'll be like, oh, I think you're using too much. Because <laughs> yours are done just for the day, aren't they? One yeah. question. Yeah. It makes the story sort of more fun to, to track it. You'll discover yeah. that enforcing the rules makes the story better. So I appreciate you uh, enforcing it for yourself. Yeah. Um, with the yeah. spell slots, just one more question. Yeah, sure. It's uh, saying you always prepped for bless and cure wounds. Does yeah. that mean that both my spell slots are just automatically? Yeah, so spell slots, when you actually cast them, these are the spells you're able to cast. Right now, we're not worried about what, what we so-called prepared spells. Anything on that list, you can cast. 
Oh. Every time you cast it, you'll use one of your two spell slots. It's almost like magical power. So I give two packets of magical power. Right. And that gets spent like fuel every time you cast a spell on that list. Oh, so, I, I, so you don't have to commit to which one it is. is. Yeah. So any spell on that list, wow. you, you would lower it by one. You cast one of the spells, you lower that two to a one. Yep. You cast That's any zero. other spell with the same spell again, doesn't matter, you yeah, lower it to zero. Yeah. And then yeah. long rest. The long rest restores the all back up. So they set you up cancer. Yeah, the cancer. That's right. So the list below the two is the one that drains it. Everything above yeah, that yeah. is can really yeah, use yeah, every action. Okay. Okay. And I'm assuming, it's like, you need to find out what each spell does that's in one of those books. It is, yes. Yeah, okay. um, there, there's, a, there's a little Pretzy of them uh, on, well, it's on, on the page you, you, tore, uh, you tore off. Right. Okay. But, but that doesn't really tell you very much. It's a very okay. yeah. thing. It's much better to look it up online. So we'll cross that bridge That's a beginner's it. version of it. I advise you to look it up properly. Sure. And yeah. I've posted some links to D&D Beyond, for example. You can make your characters in D&D Beyond. You can also just type in 5E and then the name of the spell. 5E is just shorthand for 5th edition. So that's all. you can always find these spells and find up on your awesome. Thanks. Great. That's okay, well, let's move on. But I'm very glad to help, it, and uh, hopefully all your questions are taken care of. Mm -hmm. uh, I have great. questions, but they can apply later. Okay, yeah. At the anybody. pub, if you come early, I can also do a lot of character help but if you come early. Awesome. I'm trying to work out what these um, items were that I can't read my writing. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Uh, I can't help you with that. That's I probably can't read your writing. <laughs> all right, <laughs> so. <laughs> Dak Dak, uh, during this, you know, once he sees that you're that you're well again, um, he senses during this. He's sort of been looking at you funny. Um, and um, do one of you have a uh, silver uh, uh, chaos shard on necklace? Okay, so this is something that maybe when you have such interest or in what activate Havilar, so I'm like shard shard shard. So you know, uh, Dak Dak's like, hey, uh, you know, can I can you can you do me a favor with that? H have you have you put it on, on? Have you actually put it on yet? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, think of something happy. Not being here. <laughs> <laughs> and you all see, like, there's this little glimmer of, of colored light that kind of flickers inside. It's like, ah, aha, I knew it, I knew it. Ha, ah, heroes, heroes often like this. Very rare, very rare. You you can ripen shard. Huh? Shard uh, glow, shard glow uh, with light uh, when you have emotion. Uh, then shard become very valuable. Ha <laughs> ha. So, uh, yeah, uh, you, you uh, everybody try. So anybody who wants to, you know, is, is, does anybody say, look, I'm not going to put it on even for a second, but he wants everybody to put it on for just a second to see if, if you do. Just at least some of you do that? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even if you personally didn't do it, <laughs> after enough you do, he's like, yes, yes, you all, you all ripen shard. Ripen shard, very powerful. Oh, this is great. Uh, great steel deal. You do steel deal with very rich person uh, with shard. Uh, much, much money that you get. Okay, so uh, when you have it on you, uh, those, especially if your insight skill, if your wisdom or insight are very high, you feel like a connection with it. Like while it's around your neck, it almost feels like there's somebody there with you, kind of nestled up to your chest in a way. It's almost like, like having a friend with you, like a little friend. You feel like there's maybe a kind of an emotional intelligence, and all of you make it flicker with a glow, and you notice that the flicker happens when you think, when, when you're hit by a particularly strong emotion. Um, you, again, with that insight, you sense, yeah, there's some intelligence to this thing, and it seems to be kind of like looking around. So when it's worn there, it's almost like it's looking out at the same world that you are. Very unusual. That's not dangerous. <laughs> no. So he gives each of you a shard hill he finds around, he digs around through through the cobalt, he convinces them, he actually pays some cobalt, he steel deals with some cobalt to make sure that all of you get a shard necklace around you. So okay. you don't you should put it in your inventory. If it's written down, unless you say in pocket, I'll assume that you're wearing it around your neck. So write down chaos shard on necklace. Ah uh, yes, that's 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 a good problem to have. <laughs> Um, if you already have one, uh, you don't get a second one. So, he, if so, so I know. I'm just rewriting yeah. that. Yeah. So if you have a shard, chaos shard on necklace, yeah. you don't get a new one, but now all of you have a chaos shard on necklace. And remember, by default, I'll assume that you're wearing it, because you can tell that when you're wearing it, it's sort of like watching the world, and it seems to be kind of learning something. You kind of feel a, that connection with it. If it was in your pocket, you basically don't know that it was there. So, okay. so yeah, you, you definitely choose to keep it in your pocket. It's your best friend. Okay. So, those of you who are wearing it, uh, right, uh, to all of you, so now you need to ripen the shard. Ah, ripen shard, very good. Nice glowing shard, make money with steel deal. Rich one, uh, steel deal with shard. Rich one, put shard in, and ha, and rich one, very happy. Rich one, give you a lot of money for ripe glowing shard. Very nice. Hmm. 
Um, he, at, at, you've been looking at that silver keyhole in the wall, and he's, he, uh, you notice now that you're kind of attuned to the feeling of chaos energy. You notice that, that silver crack. It's a, like, again, it's like a modern keyhole. It's mostly vertical, but it's got this sort of zags left and right. And it seems like it's a crack that just goes into the wall very deep and sort of waves back and forth. You can't see very deeply into it, but it's only like this wide. Above that is a grill, like a grating, almost like those things that you cut eggs into slices with, is the way I always think of it. It has multiple sort of grill over it. That grill has the same zigzag pattern as the big keyhole does. And as you get close, you feel chaos energy. And you can see in there, there is a chaos star that's like that big. And it really makes you feel weird. So it's sort of like walnut size. and just makes you feel weird as you approach. Like chaos energy is a very uncomfortable feeling. These tiny shards don't really have it unless you really, like, unless you really focus on it. This is something like radioactivity to get close to it. And as you get close, you feel, those of you are wearing the shard, you feel there's a connection, like there's a resonance between the shard that you're wearing and that over there. And as you get closer, your ears kind of pop. You know, like something strange is happening as you get close to that crack and get to that shard. And Dak Dax is like, yes, you feel, ah, pop, ear pop, ah. Yeah, so when shard glowing enough, your shard not glowing enough, but when shard glowing bright, you can go to place of creation, you go to job job, you can fit into crack. Make shard glow, walk into crack. Meet Jop Jop, everything solved. Jop Jop is one in charge. Jop Jop answer question. Jop Jop get uh, machines to guard us against gnolls. You answer all the questions you, that you're talking about. Definitely you want to see Jop Jop. Uh, she's very smart. She tell BB how to make mining machines. Uh, she want uh, the chaos um, shards. She wants machine parts. She wants machine parts to make into machines. Now you're probably privately thinking like, yeah, but mining is a bad thing. If you want, to, as I said at the beginning, if you want to disrupt the mining operation, you now realize you have to influence or kill Jop Jop, who's through that crack. So if that's your goal, you can play along with this to like, yeah, sure, we're interested in talking to Jop Jop. To make sure glow, you need to see thing, feel thing. Right? You start with your memories. Aha, I have idea. You strong, you brave. You uh, remember bright things by going to Mushroom Memories Cave. Yeah, there's a cave full of mushroom. You look at mushroom, oh, make, 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 make memories very strong, make emotion very strong. You get shard glowing very bright, very fast right away when you go to Mushroom Cave. Aha! All right, so <laughs> you've got Chaos Shard on a necklace, and now you've been told he describes it's just across the way. It's very easy to get to if you leave. And you're going to leave this cave. You're going to see the outside as you go in this little trip if you decide. So he tells you where to go, and again, he wants you to hurry. You've got the, the urgency <coughs> I talked about before. But he says, like, make sure you do soon. Don't, you don't want, don't want Shard to glow with just anything. You want Shard to glow bright with the right kind of memory. Go to Mushroom Cave. Very good. <laughs> so um, you are, uh, the, the portcullis opens. Uh, and you are, you are invited by the Kobolds and urged by Dak Dak to get out there and get that done. So, that is the end of that scene. And we will move on to the next one. And I will do that by changing to another sort of mode here. Chup, chup, sorry to get us all high. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one thing I didn't show is uh, the, uh, the, the, the machine shop. So, you are leaving this machine shop here. I'll just show it here. There, you can see it better here. Yes. Yeah. yes, that's cool. Yeah, so it's a machine. That's cool. As you can see it here, it's a little bit really? more clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so this is all full, of, you know, smoking and broken machines thanks to the fight that broke out, but it's, it's chock full. Yeah, climbed exactly. Up and climbed up there. All <coughs> oh, right. Exactly. So I get up to that nest that I was talking about. Yeah. yeah okay. And she's still dangling. Yep, she's, she's still dangling. Yeah, this okay. is sort of how D and D happens. Things kind of stay in status quo yeah, until okay. you mess it up. So yeah, right. she's fine. They'll probably feed Sorry, her. I'll stop asking. <laughs> <laughs> I find okay. Um, there's one important decision, uh, however, on on the way out. So exactly. some so some of the kobolds you know sort of stop you on the way out because you're allies. You have a special choice to make. They want your help in a very particular way. You've learned that they worship the black acid dragon off to the east. <coughs> now, every story you've heard about black acid dragons, and also white ice dragons, just like green poison dragons, all these dragons of certain colors, uh, have a long history of extremely evil and destructive acts. Now, dragons are not destined to be evil. Gold dragons could be evil. Black dragons could be good. But every story you've heard about black acid dragons is bad news, and these kobolds are worshipping it. They also worship Tiamat, who is evil. There's no doubt that Tiamat is evil, the, the, the queen uh, goddess of all dragons. 
and uh, they want you. Uh, they they want to. They really eager that maybe you can cash in on the thing you said in that battle, which is, oh, we were really strong heroes. You know, one of the things you scored really well is we can go out and make things happen for you. We can be your agents. We'll go out in the world and maybe fight and find things for you to strengthen you. That's why you want us to be allies. Well, like, hey, we got an idea. Why don't you go to where the Black Dragon is? Um, you know, and, and uh, you can take a tribute and show the Black Dragon that you're willing to serve. Uh, serve them, him, some say him, some say her, so well, them, I don't know, serve them, is there more than one? Black dragons, right? You can go and show that you want to be servant to the black dragon, give our tribute to the black dragon, explain how you're going to do things for the black dragon. Now, again, from every story you've heard, this sounds like you'd be signing up to be evil henchmen, right? So, from the stories you heard, it not, doesn't take a whole lot of moral philosophy to know, like, this is probably a bad idea, but they're eager for you to do that. Um, they want to give a huge tribute at a point in time in a few days. And uh, do you want to help them do that? Uh, they can switch over to that. They can keep making uh, mechs. Do they want to keep making mining mechs? So you can basically tell them, you know, what's their job going to be for the next few days. Prepare the tribute because you're promising to take that tribute in a few days to the Black Acid Dragon, you know, and, and, and be a worshiper. Or they'll go back to what they were doing, which is help make the mining mechs. If you want to do something besides those two things, you'll have to do a special move later. So the main thing is a bit of a branch point here, right? So you're all, you want to debate and pick one of two options, right? One is tell them right now, I hate to break it to you guys, but we are not going to serve the Black Acid Dragon. We're your allies. We're cool, right? But the Black Acid Dragon is a bridge too far for us. We're not going to do that. You know, we, don't, we don't trust what the Black Acid Dragon's agenda is. Cool if you do, but we're not going to do it. So you basically you, ref, you refute that expectation now. You think Sense Cole will be a little bit disappointed, but it's not like you're going to lose them as allies, right? You know, they'll drop a notch uh, in the regard, so, but it'll still, still be okay. But you'll lose backtrack. The other one is you can confirm this, right? And you might get big extra loot and more help from the Kobolds because they want to give you a big rich tribute to take the Black Acid Dragon, which you can decide to take or not. This will happen in a few days, so it's a decision for the future. Um, you know, uh, they, they, want to, uh, yeah, they want to give you some cash. Debate amongst yourselves now for a minute uh, what you want to do. One warning, if you say you're going to take to the Black Acid Dragon, then you renege on that, you'll definitely make enemies of the Kobolds, right? This is just one of the sort of parlay type rules that going back on your word in this formal negotiation is worse than just saying no right now. So if you want to say no, you should probably say it now. If you say yes, you really risk, if you don't actually do it and actually sort of embrace this agenda, or at least have a really great plan for deceiving them into thinking that you're embracing the agenda, it could really backfire on you. So, discuss amongst yourselves. Would you want option one or option two? Refute or confirm their wish? I don't feel like we would, like that. We would actually do it based on no. some of the decisions we've made in the previous No, but I'd sessions. rather refute it now and keep them as friends rather yeah. than... Yeah, yeah. 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 Also, dragons it's, it's get hungry. starting to lean too much yeah. Yeah, towards um, the I left. Mean, if we'll, you start yeah. heading down that path, yeah. You we'll, we'll attack the to black dragon's enemies. Realize. Yeah. It's not... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a little so, bit of gray area. Yeah, so, if, yeah. if, if they're yeah. also evil. If they're also your enemies. Yeah. Oh, okay. I feel like the intention of what we were doing last session when we were bartering with them was like, oh, you like, you know, they were getting their resources from the goblins? The, no, uh, the goblins were attacking the farmers and bringing yeah. the resources yeah. back. Yeah. And so we said, well, look, you know, rack off, yeah, the, go rack off the goblins and we'll do that for you instead. Yeah. Mm. So rather right. than necessarily serving the black dragon. Yeah, this is I'm giving them a different job or different attitude because area, a special so, move you yeah. can make later on to really change their agenda and go into a totally different business. Yeah, forget the goblin stuff. Yeah. Right now, your choices are simpler. It's like, do you want to yeah, promise the, to serve the Black Dragon or not? But yeah, one reason you might want to keep them on board and you know, refute them now is that you can come back and maybe steer the Kobolds to a different agenda a little bit later. It, can I just... Yeah. Is there an argument against, like, if we offend the Kobolds, is that really... Are they super powerful? Did I miss something no. last no, week? They're not yeah. super powerful. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. Yeah. it's just more yeah. prolonged battles. They're prolonged yeah. battles yeah. to begin with, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, or something like that. Not really. Yeah, it's just a basically it's what a majority of votes. I mean, we'll take it right. Comfortable with. The core thing is thinking about the. Are we still? You know, trying to solve the mystery of the farm, um, mm. you know, and trying to fix that issue. 
Yeah, is, yeah. That, is that still okay. on the agenda? So yeah. Yeah. Ben, gotta wrap it up because it's sort of like a quick little underway yeah. out there. They want to know your answer right away. So, yes. so no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're not all right. So you're gonna refute it. All right. Yeah. So they're disappointed. You know that, 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 that because you know they thought oh you big heroes, but the, and you said oh, you you did you said a couple things during. It's like oh you know maybe we know something about Tiamat and all that, but now you've made it very clear like no we don't actually worship Tiamat. We're, we're not gonna do that stuff. Okay, but uh, they they <coughs> still stay your allies, and on you go. Um, just moving forward a little bit, uh, you know, long story short, you go out the way that you came in when you were captive. This is the first time you didn't have hoods on your head. So you're back in the Caves of Chaos, uh, the Caves of Chaos Canyon before all those hoods got put on your head. So it's a familiar sight. Um, and there may be more of an opportunity to explore it, but it's a huge trench with caves set in the sloping sides, full of trees and bushes, which you are motivated to hide in because there's all kinds of monsters. You see the lines of goblins going north and south. You hear the grunting of the orcs that are up on that on that that uh, that ledge way up above you. Uh, you hear all kinds of weird screeches and see silhouettes and things through the trees that look big and dangerous. Uh, but you're instructed that if you just go from sort of bush to bush and tree to tree, keep your head down, stay away from the goblin cave, you'll be able to go into where the mushroom cave is. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think uh, unless there's, you know, in this phase of D&D with this many people, I tend to kind of keep things moving, but I'm very much open, especially between sessions, to say, like, we want to do something totally different. And things will get much more loose. Just right now, I'm kind of putting you through the paces. I'm encouraging you to, you know, not try to start too much trouble in this very dangerous place on your way across the Mushroom Cave. So if you don't mind, I'll sort of assume that you're not going to stir up a lot of trouble right now. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. You can object Dactex's if you want. Dactex's not following us, is he? What? Dactex's not following us. No, no, Dactex's Dak Dak's Dak Dak got plenty to do. He's helping fix the machines and things, so he's very busy. <coughs> Thalgrim is following you, but, uh, as promised. So, so the end of all of it's kind of dangerous, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, right. So, no worries. It's fine. I trust you. Trust is you. is, is, is BB fine. awake? Uh, BB is just, yes, is just still <laughs> ranting and raving, and he's really obsessed with finding the silver, vi the, that visor. So, what, you know, so he's, he's, the visor, I need, I need, I need I'm, I, got, I got research to do. Yeah, yeah the visor you have. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I just got, got to do research, it's very important. Yeah. So he's just increasingly panicked that he doesn't have the silver visor. Does anybody know that he's got the visor besides us? Nope. Oh. Awesome. Welcome to the group that gets attacked by the people who are, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good question, though. Being targeted. Okay. You enter a cave. There's a couple branches in the cave, which, uh, but you're instructed to don't go deeper in the cave. There's dangerous stuff in a couple directions. You can get yourself in trouble. Just take the first little passageway. When you go to the mouth of this cave, there's a little small passageway that wends itself down. You'll know because there's glowing light that you'll see uh, from a distance. And true enough, you have to go down single file. It's narrow and twisty. Maybe those of you who are tanks are the types that, that tend to go first in this situation, but we don't, we, we, I won't make you make that choice. You, you are uh, one by one enter a cave of mushrooms, and they are glorious. I'm going to show you. I'll show it to you in golden dig size. <laughs> so this is a cave, maybe you know, 30 feet across. Again, sorry for feet versus meters. That's years. awesome. Glowing yeah. mushrooms. Oh. Now these mushrooms, uh, they're in some concentric circles. In the middle, they're taller than you are, and very bright. As they get to the edge, they get smaller until the smallest <coughs> ones you know, have caps about that big. And you can't really get near the center because as you get close to the center, you feel another energy. It's not chaos energy. It's this kind of like, like a manic sort of euphoria, but your heart starts racing and you just get very like sort of excited thoughts. And you, you, but you, you're, you think you're just going to pop. Like if, if you look at the central mushrooms too much or if you get too close, you're just like, oh, okay, I'm freaking out, man. It's sort of like, you know, bad drugs at the rave kind of feeling. It's like, okay, okay, i got to calm down. So you're staying around the edge of this cave full of mushrooms. So basically a dome-shaped cave, you know, again, about 30 feet across. And these mushrooms are, as promised, mesmerizing. You know, they're pulsating different colors. And as you look at them, you start to feel things. I'll lick a mushroom to increase my spell power. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve. Okay. What is your character name? Mugger. <laughs> <laughs> I might find it. No, it's Fogrim, yes. Does it actually do that? <laughs> 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 that's crazy. D&D, I love it when you do stuff like that. That's great. No, I'm not going to do it. We'll put a pin in that for now. I'm a, I'm a cleric, I'm sure I can. Yeah, yeah you're trying to say it. Make a saving throw. Poison immunities. All right. As you look at these mushrooms, you your memories become very vivid. Memories from your backstory come with great intensity. It's almost like you're reliving these memories. That's one strange thing. Also, you realize that if you are sort of 
sort of mentally know people around you, you start getting memories that are not exactly, they're not yours, and you realize you're seeing some memories from each other. You're starting to see each other's vivid memories. And there might be a bit of a, a bit of a sense of exposure, like you're not sure if you can control which memories are flowing into other people's minds. You're all linked together in this way. <coughs> and this next exercise is all about sharing memories, and maybe find out parts of your backstory that you have in common that you didn't realize. Like maybe you actually, maybe you all have decided you know each other. There's an opportunity to find new ways that you might have been connected to the same place or the same event, and we might get some shared backstories. And that's what this exercise is. Each of you take uh, three post-its uh, of, of just different colors. You know, I know there's not one color for every player, but just you know, make sure that you don't take it. You know, we'll try to have a variety of colors. Each of you take three post-its, please. And in the corner, a little corner of each post-it, write down your character name, because I'll be collecting these later on, and uh, I'll want to know who is who. So I three different colors. No, no, three of the same color. Oh, oh, all three of the same color. Yeah, sorry. I didn't make it clear. All three of the same color. Just, just pick a color that uh, that is not the same color. It's absolutely. Is there another one of those oranges? Or? No, that's it. Three of the same color. Yeah, three of the same color. Three of the same color. Can I have blue? We'll help you find it when we this And we'll clear yeah, this board out a little bit as well. I think that needs to be the same color. Someone yeah, that's one. Green? Okay. <laughs> okay. And there's the four. Yeah, Lots of graphs. You want to move blue? No, they need, they need to be the same color, apparently. Yeah, yeah. they all need to be the same. All right, I'll leave the color. Okay. All right, please move in. And put your character name, just small, in the, in the little corner to, to make sure it's unique. Cool. Now, remember something, of course, you're making this up, right? So I'm not expecting you've already written a backstory. I like you writing your backstory piece by piece as the situation demands. So it's like your backstory is kind of coming into focus, like a picture that's developing. Uh, back when we used to develop pictures. That's a very much a Gen X reference. Sorry. Okay, so. <laughs> so remember, remember something from your character's past. Uh, it should have a very strong emotion. This is an emotion that, that, that the memories you come up with are, are going to often tap in. This is like an emotion that you might feel. It's very, very strong emotion for your character in general. And it can be a positive or negative emotion. Uh, so think of a, of a, a strong emotion memory. All of the, your memories, if we get more than one in inch of time, we might not get more than one, but they all have the same emotion. So think of the emotion, but think of the memory, and you're making it up yourself. Most important thing when this memory should just fit on a post-it, so it's small. You want to think about where this memory happened. So think of a particular place, a setting, you know, a building, a location, you know, say forest, temple, river, family home, you know, uh, neighborhood, the neighborhood yard, uh, cave, stuff like that. So think about where it happened. Maybe underline that to make it clear. And either and something that was involved besides you. It should be a person, an animal, or an object, right? So you're in the place that you underline. And this intense emotional memory involved something else besides you that's, that's centered around. It's a person, animal, or object. So you might say who the person was. You can be vague. You'd say, oh, just sibling. You don't have to give, come up with a name. You don't have to say my brother, Tim, who's 14 years old. You say, I, I, I had this memory about a sibling or a parent. But you can say, you know, mom or dad. I'll cluster these things together as we go. So are these all separate memories? <coughs> uh, just do one for now. Yeah, okay. so only one memory each from now. You might have a chance to do a second one. So on one post-it, write one such memory. And somewhere in there, just mention the emotion, the strong emotion that you felt in association with this. And then I'll ask for somebody to volunteer one. That's right. These little character chips will often move out, so this one. Scoop that stuff off the map there. Just your character <coughs> just stuff off and move this map around a bit. There we go. Oh, good. Okay. You don't have to have finished, but if somebody has finished, I'll get this show on the road. Yeah, yeah a sentence. Yeah, just it doesn't a have few, to be a few good emotion, does it? it no, no, exactly. Animal. It's just a strong emotion that you that you that you think your character you know feels pretty often. So it's, it, it's it, if this memory had this emotion, it might be emotion their character is sort of prone to feeling pretty often. Mine, mine, yeah, mine's 
my, my memory is fighting in a major battle for a mer as a mercenary for a Neverwinter noble because Neverwinter was the place Neverwinter, we yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. So we started, and yeah. my emotion is exuberance. Okay, thank you very much. Give that to me. So, good, you put your name on that. So that's Fogrims. Yeah, you're fighting in a major battle Yeah, as a mercenary for a Neverwinter noble. So what I'll do is Neverwinter is the place, and I'll underline that. So this is the Neverwinter city. And the reason I'm mentioning this is that You'll, you might want to start stealing these. Like, oh, never was a good idea. It's a really good idea. You'll see that you're motivated to steal, you know, different locations and things. I'll actually be asking you to edit your memory a bit to happen in these different locations. So Neverwinter is the first location that we have. And a noble is the person, place, or object. So I'm going to write this on a grid for reasons that I'll show you, right? So I'll have Neverwinter. is this column here. And then we have, whoops, noble on this side. And I'm going to put this at the intersection of Neverwinter and Noble. All right, so the place is Neverwinter and the thing is a noble. I'm going to ask for another memory and we'll get new places and new objects, but I'm, I'm only going to want to have three or maybe four of <coughs> the most places and three or four of the most objects. I'll start asking you to edit your memories on the fly to fit in more. We'll worry about that in a little bit, but if you have things like, oh, yeah, my thing could happen in Neverwinter, maybe you'll do that or you'll wait till another memory. We'll get to that in a moment. So, who's got another memory? Okay, okay tell, tell us. I watched a friend die in an animal attack when my character was very young and he felt fear and grief from watch after it. Awesome, okay, please give that to me. That's great, okay. Good, you've got your name there, fantastic. Watch a friend die in an animal attack. Yeah, 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 when he was young. Fear and grief, that's really good. So, yeah, I think, I think uh, yeah, like a fierce animal, right? And so I would say, you know, uh, sort of a, a, just for a brief, bad animal and dangerous animal of some sort, fierce animals involved here. And where did this happen? So did it happen, what kind of environment? Did it happen in Neverwinter or did it happen someplace else? What well, was that third location on the mountain that's very wild and rugged? Yeah, so anybody, uh, That was called... Oh yeah, up in... Uh, that was called Falling Water. Falling Water. Okay. No, that, that I wrote down. Oh, okay. <laughs> that I wrote down in the first... So, Falling session. Water. Oh yes. Okay, so Falling Water is the second location, and Bad Animals, you see I'm putting in that intersection there. Okay, now, does anybody have another memory they want to talk about? Great, please tell us. Well, I have a memory of forest, very close to a big cave, very similar to that mushroom cave, oh. and really meeting another dragonborn. And I feel powerful, and I realize my magic and skills can be very powerful if I keep working on it. Ah, great. Please but I don't over. know who is this What's the another dragonborn. I oh, yeah, and the, we have the emotion. That's great. Yeah, what is the emotion? So I know you're oh, feeling powerful. That's great. Very good. So powerful. So everybody can have different emotions. You don't have to copy each other. Yeah, so what I'll do, I like to generalize these things. So this is going to involve something involving dragons. It could be a dragonborn. It could be a, 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 an actual dragon. It could be a dragon symbol. So we're going to start getting kind of liberal with that. So I'm just going to put dragon down as one of the things. And this is now a forest. Maybe it'll be cave. So if somebody, so we'll keep this open. I'll change this to cave or forest. You know, maybe you're open to both because we want to be flexible here. Now, what we're starting to do here is I really want to start getting this motivation that the remaining memories, if you can edit it so that the place was in either a cave or forest, I'm going to clarify that, or falling water or Neverwinter. Now, falling water never in a big city. So if it's in a temple, it could be a temple in, in Neverwinter or something like that. And also, we now got three things here, noble, a bad animal, and a, and a dragon, or some reference to a dragon. Again, these are very wide references. They don't have to be the exact same animal that the other memory has. There's something in common. So I know this is a lot to ask, but what you'll see is this will cause your stories to start <coughs> entangling with each other. So who has been creative and able to have something that is able to go into an existing column or I row? I think I do have Great. Mine. So we'll go in the Neverwinter on this one, outside of the mansion. Yep. Shouting at my father uh -huh. that because of his actions, and yes. anger because of his actions, and leaving him behind. Great. See, that's great because their father's a noble, I would think. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so Vol, you've got your name there. And what is, yeah, anger. Anger. Okay, great. So anger is your emotion. Father, so I'll put down noble. So I'll put the noble okay. thing there. 
an outside of a mansion. So do you think the mansion is in Neverwinter or Falling Water? Ne Neverwinter. Neverwinter. So we'll do Noble and Neverwinter, and now we have a bit of an overlap here. The fact that you're sharing with somebody else as uh, who is this Fogram? So you and Fogram, you sort of are seeing parts of each other's memories, and your shards glow both glow a little bit brighter because you've got something in common. This is like you know, it gives you an extra motivation. Like your shards are always glowing, no matter what, no matter where you are on the board. But you see that if you have got something in common with a place or a, or a type of person, this might be the same noble. You know, when you take your break, you might realize that that the, the noble in both these is not just they both happen to be nobility. They might be the same noble. You might collaborate on that. Mm -hmm. Okay? See what we've done here? And again, I'd love to keep it with three or four, but you know, I guess somebody's got an amazing idea, so oh, such a great idea, we need a fourth row or four, uh, maybe a fourth row, maybe not a fourth column. Because we'll try. But does anybody have anything that fits onto the grid as it is? I don't know how it fits. Okay. Well, go ahead. What, what so is it going to be? Basically, a back home in Neverwinter. Yeah. I was working on the docks and I had just had... Um, I've gone back to my background here a little good, bit as good. well. So um, I had like a really abusive ship captain and I stood up to her and um, the other dock workers, one of them was my best friend and they were. Very good. Um, they stood by me and I was able to like take them and that was my defining moment as a hero. Oh, see, that's great. I love this sort of memory and we, I'm sure we can adapt it as, as, as the great. So mm -hmm. let me take your slip, i always better at reading rather than hearing. Kind okay. of here, but not quite there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, good. Yeah, Ellen, you got your name there? Yeah. Well, you said best friend, and didn't you say the bad animal got was your best, like attacked your attacked best friend? Attacked your best friend? So yeah. maybe it's a bad animal. Yeah, yeah. is anybody um, really hooked on bad animal I'm not or really friend better? Um, solid on bad animal. He th the, the character was young, yeah. thought it was an animal. I just want to make sure, does somebody have, have, have a memory, they got very excited by a bad animal memory, that you don't want to lose bad animal and turn into friend, is that okay? Or it could be monster, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Okay, great. I think the best friend connection is actually yeah, best friend quite, is really good. Yeah, exactly. quite strong there. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, okay. No. no worries. No, that, that's what this is all about. Yeah. We start adapting. Just to make it high stakes, let's called best friend. Maybe this person became your best friend mm. as a result of this. And again, this might be the same friend. This might, you might actually uh, be friends with the same person, but you'll fix that later on. So let's say that friend is that. Good. You got best friend there. And in Neverwinter is the place. Very good. So best friend in Neverwinter. The fact that you and these two people have another Neverwinter memory, again, makes your shard glow a little bit brighter. You know, the fact that, that you share a column is nice. And also, this person here, so Saryeth, the fact that you both have a best friend memory, your shards glow a little bit more when you think of each other's memory. And again, on the break and in between, I encourage you to try to figure out how do you make this best friend the same person, right? Because if they're a very friendly friend, they might be friends with more than one person. Who's got another thing to put down here? Okay. It's all doing very well. So I've got um, falling into a septic tank as a child and almost drowning. <laughs> um, pulled out by a friend. Okay. So, so that this all connect connection there. Right. Um, and that led to fear and revulsion and uh, the fear and hate getting hate getting dirty. So. Ah, oh, um, very nice. I love that. Give me that. Uh, that please. In the forest. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it could be. Uh, it, it, in could be water. it could be. It could be falling water. So I, I changed yeah. falling water. Yeah. 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 In falling water. Yeah. Yeah. Septic tank and falling water. <laughs> that's why they call it falling water. <laughs> that's water. Yep, he felt revulsion. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'd pick one like fear and revulsion. Which do you think is more? More fear, more revulsion. Revulsion, I think. Revulsion gets it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I hate to do that, to get dirty. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, dirty was I said, I'm going to scratch that. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, this is in falling water. Great. So, another friend thing that happens in falling water. Again, you have an overlap here. With Saryeth, so again, it is very likely to be the same friend. You might have that friend in common. So let's let's think of ways to collaborate there. What you got? Okay, uh, I have wonderment and excitement uh -huh. from remembering again a childhood memory. Yep. Uh, a first trip, my first trip to a cave with my clan members, um, who could be my best friends, uh, showing me and just for me discovering for the first time a geode and cracking it open. And seeing, well, not 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 not, not the amethyst <coughs> one, but more the agate, which is the lines, yeah. and oh. it seems to resemble a dragon. Ah, I was gonna say, well, maybe we can tie one of these other things in. We got a lot of best friends. I love the way you tied in a dragon. Let me take that here, because okay. I'm, I'm gonna make sure I underline things properly. You got Sorry. your name. That's great. You got wonderment. Yeah, yeah. Again, I'll pick one of the other. You know, I like one word things. So I think wonderment is nice and specific. Yeah, first trip to a cave, so we'll be there. That's great. I'll underline that. 
you know, if a clan was your best friend, but discovering that the pattern was, so let's have dragon be the operating thing here, because we've got so much of the best friend. So, side day, and you resonate a lot, your shards glow more because you have that, and it could be, of course, you know, th this looks like a dragon, and you, you uh, operate with another dragonborn, but maybe there's a connection, like there's a reason why your geo showed a dragon, maybe it's the same kind of face. Just think of a way to connect that would be a great way to get a common story. Very good job. Who's going to gotten one? Hasn't put one down yet. Uh, I was um, double crossed by a merchant um, on a campsite outside of Neverwinter, yeah. like okay. on the outskirts. Yeah. Like before the, in the in just before the, the city limits, or you know, in the area. Good. Okay. Um, I it was ob I was feeling anger, so it must have been something that was, re like. I was trading, like, I like did all this effort to get some illegal thing. Ah. I was going to trade it for some other illegal thing. Oh, nice. But the other person who was trading stole it back. Yeah, or betrayed or you like somehow. Betrayed and this could somehow. still be vague. Like, a lot of stories, mm. you don't have to be super specific because I'll sharpen it, you'll sharpen it as you talk to each other. Can I have this? Yes. So this is wonderful. There's a couple of choices that we can make. One is, I think that... Is it possible, because we don't have a lot for noble, is it possible that, that the, the other buyer, the person betraying, might have been a noble of some sort? Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so I was almost thinking it could have been like a dragon egg or a... Oh, sure. Yep, something that's... Like something really... Something yeah, it's your choice. It's your memory. Yeah, you can have it. You, you have connect to a mobile, a noble. Let's, it, best friend, I think, is pretty well populated. Yeah. yeah, you can have it relate to dragon or relate to noble. Which one would you prefer? I'll relate to a noble. Yeah, okay. Maybe so noble, noble sort of betrayed, maybe you. Screwed you over somehow. Too. Double crossed and anger is your emotion. That's mm -hmm. great. You've got your name there. That's good. Double crossed with the merchant. Yeah, it's a campsite. So we have a lot in Neverwinter. We don't much in Cave Forest. Can be like in the in the forest that yeah. this happened, like the forest outside of Neverwinter. Yeah. Okay, great. That's that's awesome. So we have a new thing here. But again, you've got resonance. So those of you who involve the noble, again, this might be the same noble, or at least the same noble family, same noble house. So you want to be talking to each other about how you can get that in common. Let's go and commit this to being in the forest. So, Saida, you suggested cave or forest. If it's okay to keep it forest now, because I don't think, it, well, maybe this, this drop. No, yours is happening in caves. So let's keep it cave. No, that's fine. It's fine. We'll yeah, keep it in cave. Maybe campsite. Yeah, cave. Yeah, because, yeah, well, if you're doing sort of dirty dealings, you know, yeah. maybe you snuck into the cave to sort of hide. Mm, makes right? sense. Yeah. And you might have been in the same cave at different times, or this might have even somehow been like this was involved, like the thing was traded was the geode or something like that, right? So, this is the kind of creativity mm -hmm. you can get into. You stole his genome. <laughs> <laughs> he left for some I'll, 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 I'll do some magic as well, but the more <laughs> ideas you give me, the better. Who has not put a memory uh, down? Yeah, so... Good. I hope this is right. Um, of course it's right. While, it's <laughs> while a part of a mercenary company uh, stationed in Neverwinter, um, I was in a tavern one night and badly beat a nobleman for uh, uh, insulting my mercenary company. Okay. Uh, that led to me fleeing the city. And okay. subsequently deserting my company Ooh, and right. felt very ashamed and guilty. Oh, ashamed and guilty. Yes. Very good. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's really good. That's really good. We got your name there. Neverwinter is perfect for that. Bad mouthing. Yeah, and the noble, exactly. Underline noble. Yes. Awesome. So we'll put it there. So again, look for the resonances both on that same spot, other Neverwinter things. You know, maybe there's connections over here. So what we'll probably end up with is maybe like three stories amongst all of you. There might be three sort of big events or sort of little subplots, you know, because that way I can serve, I can't serve ten subplots very easily, but I can serve three subplots that involve a few of you. That's my motivation here. Very good. Uh, who has not put down a memory yet? Okay. everyone. Very good. So let me just see where we're going for time because we have other things to do. Yeah, because I, I don't want only one or two people to have a memory down. So we'll just give some extra time for the rest. You can, these are not set in stone. And even after we do this, you can change it later on. But um, I'll do a couple things, uh, and then you'll have a chance to discuss and flesh these things out. So while I look at that, think about that. Great. Okay. Uh, maybe I should do this now. While I got, so. All of you, your chaos shards start glowing, and you've done such a good job here that everybody here has got at least you know, one or two things in common. Like this one here, this one here. You've got something right on top of you there. So you're linked to at least two other things. So I think that's good. I think we'll all give everybody the same score. If somebody had been way off on their own because they just didn't want to be entangled with somebody, they, their, their shard wouldn't glow as much, but you've done a very good job entangling with each other. 
So next to it says chaos shard on necklace, a way to write down a couple things because. Oh my God, that yeah. <laughs> so the next to chaos shard on necklace. Now write down the phrase glowing, and then put a color. What is the color of that emotion? Glowing color with emotion. So fill in color and fill in emotion with your color and your emotion. One word for emotion if you possibly can. So like glowing red with anger, glowing gold with pride, glowing you know, green with inquisitiveness. You know, it doesn't have to be logical, just it might be a color that just, just makes sense to you. Purple with fear? Yes, right, exactly. That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> they, 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 can, they can be the same color as somebody else. There's different shades of purple. Magenta. It's not like salmon. It's a real <laughs> Salmon. Yeah. Plaid. It has to be solid color. color. No plaid. Mm -hmm. That's a glowing yes. color with emotion. So next to key, I'll start a necklace. The phrase glowing blah with blah, where it's a color with emotion. And then next to that, put a little in parentheses, put three. It's like three notches of brightness. Oh, because, because you've all entangled. You could have ended up with just one if you'd had something totally off on its own, but because you've entangled others, you've, you've, you've got three notches of brightness. That will make sight. Dak, dak. Okay. When you, yeah, I'm going to cross the as well. I'm going to encourage people more and more uh, to remake your characters in D&D Beyond. You'll be getting to level two soon. And this is a great time to start, you know, formalize, you can, you can keep editing this, and some people do stick their color sheets there, it's, you'll just have to like staple, you know, another sheet onto it, so transcribe it. But it's called D&D &D Beyond, I'll post links to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's an app, oh, okay. it's a website and an app, and you can for free recreate your characters, and I, I did a workshop a little while ago, maybe I'll do it again, I'll, I'll see how much demand there is for it, uh, to show people how to use that. Or it can use a player's handbook, right, so you can, you can come early, and do this bit at a time, you know, so you can just work with my player's handbook if you don't want to buy one, but there is a beautiful book. But D&D Beyond is, uh, is for free, and, and also come early and I can walk you through it. So you can just kind of try to recreate your character. You can tweak your character as you go. It's fine to, to edit your character as you go. Some people <coughs> have started doing that. <coughs> and as you do, it'll print out a nice long character sheet. There's lots of space for all the things that you get. I could pro probably use that with that app that I showed you last week. Uh, yeah, it has to be D&D &D Beyond because that enforces the content restriction, whereas your app is, is you basically yeah. give everybody all the content and it's not, it's not quite. And it's a great reference. It's a nice, yeah. quick, snappy reference. That's fine. Use it for that. But using to build a character, um, I, I think, won't, uh, it's not guaranteed to be correct, and it might not respect the, the licensing. Good. Okay. So, um, by default, again, I, I assume you're still wearing the shard around your neck, and you could, so you can change that now. You can say, no, I am going to wear it, because as you wear it, even when you get away from the mushroom cave, when you encounter things that have that emotion, you just get the sense like this little shard is now really interested in that emotion. It's like it's kind of hungry for that emotion. And any time that you're adventuring around and it gets to sort of see and, and feel with you some emotional event, you're pretty sure it'll keep glowing brighter. And as Dak Dak said, the brighter the glow, the more, the more money you can sell it for, the more powerful it is. Not sure what that means exactly. So um, that's something that if you're wearing it out, it might you just get the sense that it'll glow brighter only if you're wearing it around. You're not sure what will make it glow brighter, but you get a sense that has something to do with that emotion that you chose. If you keep it in your pocket, you sense that it'll keep that glow for now. Maybe it'll fade if, if you never wear it. But you know, it feels a little lonely. You feel like you know it's a little sad when you take it off. Uh, but also, uh, it, it won't uh, it won't increase in glow. So that is your decision now. Your character sheet basically is your database, your inventory. And I very much rely, I always ask, is it on your sheet? And it's, it's the only sort of database we have. We don't have a computer uh, involved in this. So I'm, uh, I'm expecting you to keep that up in one state or the other, either wearing it or not. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll have a session before too long that has deepening these PC, these backstories. So think about that, but also correspond with each other. I've sent out a link to Discord. That's a great chat program. It's a free chat program for you. It's not supported by ads, and I, I pay money to, to boost it and stuff like that. So I really recommend that as a way to chat with each other. It's a lot of fun, and there's a channel that's just for you. Uh, or even better yet, you know, just uh, find out each other's numbers any way you can, and we'll come to the pub afterwards. There's all these ways to talk about your backstories. It's really fun to get entangled with each other. And also this break that we have coming up will also be a way to do it. So we'll take some time to deepen it, but it's great if you think about that and do a little correspondence on how you're all done. 
So please start writing things down. I've taken a picture, so you can take your post-it back if you've forgotten what you've written. Feel free to take your post-its back, show them to each other. Everybody spend a few minutes you know, with people that uh, remember who, you want, who you're connected to, right? Just look for other people that have the same place or the same uh, thing involved and have a little chat for right now and maybe copy a few notes down. Um, you know, if you need a sheet of paper, I can probably give you one if uh, you're running out of space. So take a few minutes to, to chat. Find what you have in common with somebody. Start brainstorming. So you know how it's the, one of the factors is a noble. Does that have to be the same guy? It doesn't have to be before yeah. funded if it is, or at least yeah, the same okay. family. So you know, it could be a friend you know, one is one is a father and one is a daughter, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or so mother and a, and a daughter, and a son, that kind of thing. Gotcha. You know, that kind of thing. It's more fun. It's not necessary. Yeah. Who needs blank sheets of paper? I've got some blank sheets of paper if you want to do this. It just needs to be something that makes sense because I need some way to explain why my characters are cowards. So I need I need some way to make that conversation going Super not want to go into fights or because he's seen something really brutal as a child. Mm -hmm. okay. mm. So we can't have the same thing. No, sorry. What about a traumatic event like falling into a septic tank? No. Maybe he had to fish you out and that's just pretty <laughs> <That's> just, yeah. <laughs> it, No. I've been yeah. terrified but of septic tanks ever since. But they yeah. <laughs> they're out there. They're out there. Get you. I know somebody who did that. Oh, so is that your friend pulled you out of the septic tank? Yes. Then we can have the same thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and the noble stuff is there, so yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Who had and then they went to do with the noble? Who had the Or we're both mercenaries, I think. Oh, yeah, we're both Yeah, yeah. Who had the gladiator? Yeah. 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 A helping you person did. as a child and then a guy. helping person yeah. as an adult, and you were yeah. on the docks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they helped me out and they, you know, stowing. Well, yeah. that's strong. No, yep. my my decision. Yeah. Oh, so they yeah. have all the other like, top members to me as well, you know, to so follow me. Yeah, okay, so they're against the baddies. Uh, and well, I think there's the fighter's backstory is that they're a noble yeah. human, oh, so he's right. saying, or well, maybe oh, his right. father is the noble that we fought for. Yeah, so. okay. Would you yeah. rather take right. yeah. that? Yeah, maybe I bashed his son or something. Him? Yeah, that would be me. Okay, yeah. Maybe someone else is. Maybe his brother or something. Oh, no, no, no. I just, okay, good. It's all a discontent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is one guy just at the center of everything in yeah, the Hey, Thorogram, use your stick pack that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so you said the cave that this happened in was a cave like the mushroom cave. Very similar, yeah. Quite yeah. deep, quite. I can actually hook up with this because, like, if I have a friend, say, if I say bear attack and say it's not a cave. <coughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The caves and what about the kids? Or, um, what about. I don't know. I'm willing to go with anything at the moment. Because I have no memory of where this came from. I thought it was just take as well. As a young Yeah, I know it's somewhere in the forest. I remember it's in a forest and it's kind of like deep and it's a huge cave. Very similar to the mushroom cave. Maybe a claustrophobia. Maybe. I'm willing to go with anything that involves fear. My character needs. Something like that. And in particular, things that events that you're, you're you know things that link these things together you know like like why why is it the same cave where both this betrayal this trade-off happened and this geo was found and this dragonborn was found you know mm. is there is there some plot that can somehow involve the three of those you know that's part of the creativity mm. as well mm -hmm. and it's great what i hear a lot of which are, i really encourage you're saying yes to each other it's always good to, for brainstorm just like yeah sure i can adapt that you try to roll with each other's ideas yes. you know so so your ideas should be kind of gluey and, and, and malleable because you're sort of you know taking influence from other people have another minute to talk about that before we have to move on. Keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Well, I'm, yeah. The link, the same person as a child saved me and helped you out. So there's a, there's a link there. Um, what are we getting? A, a fear, something, something traumatic, fear. traumatic event. So he was afraid. Yeah. So. I'm willing to take anything. Uh, darkness. Hey, mine's with these three. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, <laughs> well, and then a cake. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
evil people. people. Yeah. 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 That's why I'm putting yeah. the yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm yeah. 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 sure. I see. And so people are saying that they're actually connected. I think there's a real connection between the geode is valuable, the snow is valuable, so maybe... Do we know that yet? Maybe it's the same geode somehow in time, like you discovered it and then you partnered with this one to sell it, and that's where the trail happened. You want to talk about the nature of the geode and the noble and the illegal trade that was happening? Okay. But we don't know why. I know. I don't get as far as I'm concerned. This all happened when I was a child. Because of the young. So I don't know why. Exactly. Like He's a I know why. The then why did you yeah. share? So maybe you discovered it, and maybe yeah, if you some of yeah. <laughs> you, you you were friends <laughs> or 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 a schoolmate. I think schoolmate. I like this idea. I beat up. Yeah, maybe I found it, and I thought I'm going to come back to that later. Maybe I don't. Yeah, it sounds like a good idea. So you know, and yeah, come back like 20 years later to see if it was still in my social media songs. Yeah. I'm getting here. Interesting. Yeah. Because the lot fingers here has gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that would draw a good point. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a three way. Yeah, we put a four way here. Yeah. Yeah, combine. Yes, good. The same noble that stiffed you. Yeah. Yeah. Could be your father. Yeah. Because my dad, who. Oh, great. I love this. Bash his dad. And feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Hate you. <laughs> and the fun thing too is that there might be things you didn't realize until you got in this cave. Like it's like, wait a minute, like the noble. Yeah. I'm seeing your memory, that noble, and I know who that noble is. That's yeah, my yeah. dad. You know, so you, you actually, as characters, you might be having this conversation in the cave. Like oh, we had no idea that we had this connection. It's, it's cool. totally. Like, so like, Finny's on my dad. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can think of it as like Thank it's like you. fate has drawn drawn together. Yeah. Yeah. Like wow, what are the odds that my dad Safe is the one that beat up? You know, we never knew this until we get there. So maybe it's just fate has brought you together, or yeah, maybe your memories are being sort of backwritten somehow. Maybe some great author in the sky is deliberately messing with your head. Psychedelic mushrooms. Okay, great. Well, very good job, everybody. Um, shall we move on? I think you're, you've yeah. gotten and the break and the pub and the and discord and all that stuff is a way to do that more. Anybody want a piece of paper before we put these away? Okay. Uh, there's paper clips, by the way, so if you've got multiple pieces of paper, feel free to steal a paper clip from that folder on the edge there. And I will pack these up. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take the, the post-it. So if you took the post-it off, uh, just put it, if it has writing on it, put it back on the board where you found it. Uh, those, you, I'm, obviously, we didn't have time to use your other two beautiful colored post-its. Um, feel free to just keep them. Write something nice okay. to somebody you like. Mm -hmm. All right. We will soon move on to the break, but I'll set the scene for the next one, which we often do. But okay. before that, XP. So usually you get XP on scenes. You're still level one, so normally I'll get a little bit of XP here. I'm not going to do that now because at the end of the session, you get a large amount of XP. But I want to get you in the habit of every time that something happens with DM, you want to say, where's the loot and where's our XP? <laughs> every scene should have both. Loot is a very good question, though. I'm glad you asked. Uh, you find when you're there staring, you realize, like, wow, you know, that thing next to the mushroom really looks like a skeleton. It looks like a skull. It's like, oh, my God, it is a skull. You realize, you know, that once you sort of look around and look deeper and, and the dazzle from the light goes out, you see that there's a skull, then there's, like, a foot, and there's a femur, all skeletons. And you look closer and sort of, you know, you can sort of brave the sort of manic feeling by getting a little closer. You see that the, the mushrooms are on top of a bunch of skeletal bodies that have just been rotting here for a long time. As you notice that, you notice that these skeletons, you know, they have bits of armor and possessions. Most of us, you know, rusted as a wet cave. But there's some things that don't rust, and that is silver and gold. It's tarnished yeah. silver, not gold in this case, but tarnished silver. It goes, ooh, these things have jewelry. And, you know, if you're very much morally against robbing the dead, let me know, because I might give you credit for that later on. But, you know, that may should be repatriated to wherever it came from. This jewelry seems to be quite distinctive, and nobody's going to find it in this cave. This is not an easy cave to find. So if you take this, this jewelry, you might decide, I'm going to find out who the rightful owner for this is, because it's all very distinctive. The jewelry is really beautiful. It has, you just, uh, those of you who are elves, say, like, that's an elven design, but you elves, like, that's like a really old elven design. It's sort of like your grandma's sort of <coughs> elven design. And it's very, very, very nature-based, but it's based on plants and things that you don't recognize. So you would guess this is elven jewelry, but uh, if you took it, write down on your loot, um, elven jewelry I speak from cave. 
Uh, you can't. There's no words on it. Yeah, there's no words on it. But if you carry it around, you know, when you make moves later on, you can investigate further. All these things are an invitation for you to spend uh, more time to learn more. Do we so all just call get it a piece? Yes, you all yeah, get a piece. Okay. But you divvy it up fair and square, mm -hmm. and you each write down elven jewelry or elven silver jewel jewelry from case, and then write in parentheses afterwards five SP. So you know that just the silver alone is about five silver pieces worth of silver in your piece of jewelry that you got. And you can say it's a, you, you feel free to embellish further. You can say it's a necklace, it's a ring, it's a bracelet, whatever else. You, know. you can even design it yourself. Just, you know, imagine this element. You can, you can draw it, you can do whatever you like. I like you to add to the story here. Can my character not touch it? Because he's a bad yeah. yeah. and he feels like it's yeah. wrong to touch yeah. his people's yeah, crap. Don't have okay, sure. Uh, what's your character's name? I want to offload all this stuff anyway. I don't want really to I'll take it. Having it around. <laughs> 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 Where's Dak? We need. Don't we need a shirt. I, I feel like Dak is. Dak is. It's fine with probably dead humans, but uh, dead sure. elves. Um, but yeah, so if yeah, you're not required to take it, but if you take it, do. If you didn't take it, let me know because <coughs> that that also might have some effect. I, I don't know if this is reaching or not. Yeah. Just, it occurs yeah, to me that we're in a dark cave, and I have dark visions. Ah, yes, yeah. Yeah, I'd say that you helped a lot. No, I, think, I think dark vision contributed to this. Like you were, you were the reason why some jewelry got found. So okay, it's very good to mention right, cool. well. yeah, we Sometimes when we do a skill roll, a skill check, you definitely want to mention it because it would boost your skill check or give you advantage. In a scene like this, we'll, we're kind of doing a more general scene, so we can all imagine that your dark vision was very important. Okay. That's all I wanted, really. Sure. I think sure. I know sure. One. Thank you. Can I take some mushrooms? Yes, you may. What are you trying to do? Well, I'm from that little town where. They used to smoke funny things. <laughs> and eat the things that would grow. Okay. So, so it's reminiscent of mine if I can take yeah, it. Yep, so you decide to take a mushroom. Uh, yeah. Just a little one. Yeah, take a little one. You've got a little mushroom, so, so write down write down uh, small mushroom from cave. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't finished it. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So that was your loot. Five sword pieces, which is pretty good. You know, this is typical at level one because it's yeah. pretty, pretty nice little bits of loot. You can make your, this is something you can use to spend on. Uh, you know, the the kobolds will probably buy this right off of you. However, if you hold on to it and sell it to a really interested buyer who's really into this sort of thing, you might sell it for more than five sword pieces. So yeah, you might hold on to it for a little while to find a, a real motivated buyer. Okay, here we go further. We are going to. Get back to the Cobalt Cave, where we'll have a bit of a twist. Whoops, let me do this. Ah, so this I think I already showed once. Enter, so uh, for those who are walking on video or if you ever look at this, I publish all these materials so you can do this thing yourself. If you liked this idea of like you know, motivating people to do a backstory in a, in a game-like way, this is something that I call you know backstory connection module. And I have little uh, hashtags that you can use, you can search my materials. If you're a donor, you get these materials for free. So that's something that uh, if you shoot this QR code, you'll go to our uh, Patreon page. Instead of tapping the card every time you have to donate, um, you can just donate five five dollars. You know, typically when you play a game at a table like this, usually you have to pay five dollars per person per night. Uh, just any game store will charge you that. I appreciate donations of that ilk. I have the card key, but also if you go to the Patreon, you unlock videos, and you can also get free materials. So that's something that we just did called interstory backstory connection. Oh, we'll do that. Okay. Well, I'll that. that picture I'll show you more clearly at the moment that comes. All right, back you go to the Cobalt Cave with your some of you with glowing shards around your neck. And you see that big keyhole in the north wall, right? I described. It had that uh, thing that you know leads to Jop Jop. And uh, last time you got there, you felt a connection with your shards. So imagine a few of you are brave enough to get a little bit closer. And this time, your ears still pop, but you just feel kind of confident. You feel that resonance is stronger, but it feels like you control it a bit more. That emotion is maybe surging you a bit more as you get close. Help out. Help out. Help out. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like I said, the, the, uh, the, the, there's, a sh there's a big chaos shard above it with the same sort of angle, sort of keyhole shapes above. And it seems like you know, your, your shard is sort of paying attention to that. You're, you can tell your shard is very much paying attention to those little keyhole, shard, uh, keyhole shapes. And those of you who get close uh, feel sort of weird and compressed. And as you do, it seems like this, the crack is getting wider and straighter. Those of you who are watching someone do this, you see their body is getting thinner and more crooked. Like they're almost turning, they're kind of 
as they get close, they almost turn almost like a, like a paper cutout of themselves. They, they look perfectly healthy, and they're turning into the shape of that keyhole. So as they're walking in with the, with the glowing shard, their body is sort of fitting and thinning so it can slip right through. Those of you who try without wearing the shard can't go anywhere. You might be tempted to wear the shard anyway. However, one of you, by experimenting, you say, well, if you hold the hand of someone who's got a glowing shard, you kind of inherit that same power. So, so it's a little, bit, a little bit slower to happen, but you, if you're holding the hand of somebody who's wearing a glowing shard, even if you're not wearing one yourself, you also distort the same way. So almost like a string of paper dolls, you can work your way into this crack. Before we go, go in there, can I ask the cobalt something? Uh, well, there's, there's, there's opportunities for this right. later on. So I love investigation, but there's a chance next session that you can ask lots of stuff for the Kobolds. If you have questions, I love questions. I'm trying to inspire it. But there's, there's a place where you have to make decisions on what you ask. Oh, trust me, it's, it's one that pub. That'll kind of come up <laughs> very, very soon. Yeah, I don't give new information away at the pub, but I do confirm information <laughs> I've already given away that, that if you're trying to remember information I've given away, I'll say. Is there anyone that doesn't go through? Yeah, I mean, this is something where, you know, generally adventurers stick together, but some of you could decide not to go through. If you hang back and you don't have a glowing shard, <coughs> you, you, might, you might find there's no way in, because the only way you know is to either wear the shard or to hold hands with someone. And, you know, normally I would also say, oh, who goes first, who goes second? Again, with a group this big and in interest of time, I'll sort of, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a hint that it seems it's going to be safe to go through. Now, no, normally DM won't do that. Normally, I want to keep it very tense, but with a group this big and with sort of moving things along, we'll sort of just sort of forward the story. That let's say eventually, as adventurers, you say, "Oh, fuck it," you decide just to maybe go through. Not that with my personality, I just grab two people. So the most like, scared one in the back was it? I'm glad it's very good. I like that very much. It doesn't want to go. Right. Okay. So I'm sure you're the second one in, then because you're right behind me. When just you throw <laughs> 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 try to scroll. You have no say. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> just grab it. Oh, no, no. We just put it under my arm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Legs kicking all the way. When you walk, when you go through, you get very thin, and it's almost like you're walking down a corner. You're sort of walking like striding, but you know that you're like now this thin, and you're sort of crooked. But to you, it's like a silver lined straight corridor that you're all sort of walking down. Very strange feeling, I'm sure, for you. Mm -hmm. As you emerge in the next room, you sort of weave back and forth a bit. Maybe you go like 10 or 20 feet back through, so it's definitely a nice security feature. You couldn't get, get through any other way. As you emerge into this next room, you pop back into shape. And one by one, you end up in a room that looks like this. It's got beautiful Ooh. cushions. It's got silken hangings on the wall. It's got hookah pipes Ooh. on all the different tables. It smells very strongly of smoke and herbs and you know, drug. <laughs> if, you're, if, you, if you ever smoked drugs, it's like, ooh, yeah, I think I know what's in this hookah pipe. But there's also you know, tobacco. There's Lots of food, half-eaten food around. It's kind of messy. There's also clothes everywhere. Very kind of exotic, you know, like um, costumes almost. Like a kind of thing somebody had a like, fancy dress-up party here and just everybody left their clothes everywhere. They're sort of flung everywhere, sort of disordered. It's not like my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got a nice sort of draping uh, uh, of fabric on top. So... Uh, one of the most prominent things, you've gone north to get in there, and there's a big round room. And in the north of this room, the big prominent feature is a giant round disc. But you can see, those of you who have like, good investigation skills and good intelligence, you notice that there's like a, a track next to the disc. It looks like a disc is designed to roll to the side and maybe reveal something on the other side, but it's not going away. There doesn't seem to be a way to open it. But you only have a few seconds to look around like, that looks like that might be a door, and it starts to roll open. It's like, yes, it is a door, and that door starts to roll open as you're looking. Hide. <laughs> as the door opens, a uh, huge billow of smoke <laughs> comes out, really fragrant smoke, let's just say. And like, oh, you get a little dizzy as you breathe this in, <laughs> like this massive dark smoke rolling out of this door. And you see someone emerge. You, first you see her silhouette, and then you see her quite clearly. She is human. She has got very pale skin and long dark hair. She's got really strong eye makeup, like really strong mascara. The hair is very glossy down her shoulder. She's got a beautiful velvet dress, like an evening dress on. And she's got several tattoos all up and down her arms. Uh, she has a burned box over her eyes. But unlike everybody else you've seen, she doesn't look crazy. She just has a very penetrating gaze as she's looking at you all. 
And as she emerges from this billowing smoke, mesmerizing you all, she sings. Oh, Lord, won't you bring me a nice glowing shard? <laughs> I can take them and make them, but that gets so hard. Work hard, oh, my lonesome, my fingers get charred. So, Lord, won't you bring me a nice glowing shard? <laughs> As she wiggles her fingers, you notice, you thought they're like black, long, painted fingernails, but you notice that it sort of looks, she's got bone at the end of her fingers, like long, extended, blackened bones that look kind of sharp, but almost like they've been sharpened, and they're all kind of black with some sort of fiery thing, and the flesh is sort of you know, cauterized all around it. You can see the smoke only clears a little bit. You can see that there's this passageway, and there's another chamber beyond, but it is full of smoke. Uh, she gives you all what can only be described as a very sexy look. She kind of scans the, the, the rest of you. Um, and who here is a she with a high charisma? If your pronoun is she, and you've got a high charisma bonus. Negative one. Yeah. All you she's, character she's, your character's a she, what's your charisma bonus? I have plus two. Plus two. Mm -hmm. Who else got another charisma? I'm a they with plus one. Yeah, that's do, you, do you feel a little sexy right now? <laughs> Is this vibe working for you? <laughs> Not as much as the plus two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what I've heard so far. So she looks at you and she just gives you like a look like up and down like, hmm. She checks you out. Roll to sleep with the weird leg. <laughs> <laughs> and she has a sort of squeaky, sort of cackling laugh. She, she reaches something around her, because she's got jewelry and stuff, she reaches around the silver, as a long silver chain, and she quickly starts whipping it over her head and sort of like going around like a lasso over her head. And she looks at you. She, she winks at you, but she scans the rest of you, and the whip snaps out at somebody. All of you, besides you, she likes you, so she's not going to do this to you. All of you make a charisma saving throw. Remember, your saving throws are in the little box. Um, it's probably the same as your charisma bonus, but little uh, help, help your neighbor because yeah, I think we need to roll a d20 for the saving. You roll a d20 for your saving throw. So roll d20. You add the, the charisma saving throw. Depending on your class, it might be higher than just your regular charisma bonus. One. Everybody roll. Everybody compare. Yeah. And minus one of charisma. Okay, let's find out who has the lowest. Who rolls the lowest on all of these? Hey, you rolled a one. I got a two and a minus one of charisma. Okay, your score is one. Oh, well, Anybody get a score one or lower yeah. on this roll? No, I get a nine. Okay, that's that's all right. So you, um, so uh, what would, what's your character name again? Sarah. Yeah, Sarah. Yeah. So Sarah. Yeah. She she yes. after after looking around with you, she looks at you and she's kind of like her, her lips sort of sneers and she snaps out at you. This whip it extends. It's got little teeth at the end. It grabs onto the shard. Is, do you have a shard around your neck? Yep. Okay, I was going to say, you have to have a shard around You have a shard around your neck. It grabs onto that shard and pulls. You feel like pain in the back of your neck as the necklace pops and it flies out. You take one hit point of damage. Cool, that full. Yes, blood is trickling down the back of your neck. I didn't want it anyway. She whips it back and deftly she sort of snatches it out of the air. That glowing shard now is hers. She, with her fingernail, she pops it out of its little socket, and now she's got this glowing shard. It's like, oh. Now, what is the emotion that, uh, that, that your shard is charged up with? Uh, fear. Fear, okay. She's like, oh, wow, I haven't seen this color for a while. Well, i got to try this out. She pulls out from her cleavage a silver visor. This is a very fancy silver visor. It's got all kinds of nice embossed. It looks much nicer than that. And uh, she, uh, again, this is all happening quite fast. She takes that, she holds the visor, she puts it inside the visor, and you hear a click on there. And she puts it over her face. And there's this bright flashing light. It's like this box is full of bright silvery light. And it's all around the edges, it's so bright, but it almost blinds you, like an arc welder, that kind of brightness. Smoke starts to come up from behind this visor, and you can smell burning flesh. And there's this like that, 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 that sound. You also hear this really high piercing scream, but it doesn't seem to be coming from her. It's coming from her direction, but it doesn't seem to be coming out of her mouth. She 
just sort of twitches like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And she snaps her head forward. The visor falls around because it's got a chain, a very nice chain hanging around. And she looks up. What color was your shard glowing? Black. All right, wow. Her eyes are just it's glowing black, which is a weird sort of color to glow, but it somehow makes sense. Like, your, your, your brains cannot comprehend what this color is. You only just know there's a glowing kind of black, and those eyes uh, are, are staring at you. Again, the box of skin around her is freshly burned, and smoke is still rising. She says, oh, I see it now. Oh, fear, right. That's what my machines need. They need to fear not getting the shards. They need to fear displeasing me. I've never tried using fear before. Oh, come on, come on, baby, where are you? She reaches behind her. Oh, yeah, I dig it, I dig it. She pulls out this little thing that I guess we would call a bot, like a little robot. It's got, like, metallic spider legs and a metal box. And just at a glance, you see this kind of ramshackle. It's like a bunch of different kinds of machines, and the legs aren't made of the same material, and they're slightly different lengths. And it's got tubes and wires and stuff. And inside, you know, but it's about maybe about the size of a small dog. And inside, there's a, uh, the central, there's like a bronze box. It's kind of got a web, and it's got like a gray sort of stone inside. She, she holds it in front, as she sets it down in front of her, and she reaches up with her fingers. And her fingers just like make a snapping motion, and she pulls... And like this hole in space kind of opens up. It's like this hovering tear in reality. And you're sort of looking through this emerging hole, and you're looking into a different space, a different world. It's like you're looking through, you know, I guess a, like a video screen, but there's no such technology here. And this rattling sound fills the room. This like a, it's almost like a tumble dryer full of rocks. It's a very loud, deafening sound of clattering stones. And as it opens up, you can see that inside you see swirling black dots, like glossy black stones of some sort, swirling and swirling. Those of you who are at the right angle can see there's like a huge cavern that's made of these stones that are all writhing and swimming around. There's flashes of elemental magic inside this hole that's opening up. There's like lightning breaks out and acid starts appearing and ice forms and uh, powder fills the air. All kinds of wonderful sort of elements being created and disappearing inside this void that she's exposing to you. As she stares at it, the stream of those black little rocks comes tumbling and stream out. They look just like the little rocks that were coming out of the machines that were attacking you a little while ago. The sentries, yeah. The same kind of thing as you're attacked by those machines. The same form of rocks. And just like that, just before it turns, uh, just before it hits the little bot in front of it, that little spider bot, the, the things turn in that glowing black, sort of like a, like a glowing pure energy of that same glowing black color, and it pummels into this thing, and that little box, that webbed box inside, glows that glowing black color. And she's like, yeah, yeah, feel that, sweetie, feel the fear. You got fear, and I'll get in the chaos shard. It's your job. I'm going to be very angry and scared. You're going to be very scared. You're going to be, you're feeling terrified that you haven't gotten that shard. That'll motivate you. That'll do it. Go on, baby, go on. And the thing starts walking around. It walks behind her back the way that she went. And she just ignores it. She's like, yeah, go on, go on. All right, go find the shard, find the shard. And she sort of follows it back into the smoke. And you're all sitting like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> <laughs> so it's moving around seeking out shards. That hole above her head is sort of stayed. She lowered her fingers, but still staying there. It's sort of slowly sort of closing, and she moves away from it. <clears throat> there's a thunk. There's this big, like, mass sort of fills the hole that's about this big. It just gets clogged with something. But there's so much smoke you can't see. You just see, like, this sort of a lumpy mass is now sort of, it's, it's, it's sort of protruded out from wherever the space is into this. Something fills the hole in the smoke that's sort of rolling out. You can't really see the details. You just see some mass falls out of it. There's this wet plop on the ground, and then it kind of forms up into this shape. So it's sort of a body size shape, maybe the size of a child. It's a silhouette, but you can't see any details. Jop Jop pays no attention. She's turned her back on as she goes back into the room that she came from. But this thing you know, sort of shuffles forward and is standing in the doorway, surrounded by smoke. She's gone deeper in. She's lost in the smoke. She's cooing to the bot that she's talking to, talking about the fear that it should be uh, feeling. Uh, the, uh, I'll write down fear, because I'll, I'll want to know that later on. Uh, and you can see that that black glow is sort of like flashing through the smoke, and there's more of that sort of slurp, plop sound. And plop, plop is sort of happening over and over again. You hear that tearing sound. You hear that, those rolling rock sounds like get louder and softer as she's, uh, but you can only hear it. It's back there. Uh, you are in a big round room, this passage where the big door ran out of the way is a passage to that north room where the smoke is, and this thing is in the way. 
pretty soon a second one joins it and sort of is next to it. So now it's fully, the two of them are now filling the doorway. It sort of comes, comes from the smoke. And uh, both of them, they sort of rise up a little bit and then and squat down this farting noise, fills the sound, and this green fog kind of emerges from this mixing with the smoke and kind of rolls towards you, creating this wall of disgusting green fog. <laughs> the passage is blocked. You can't see it very well. Um, you'll have to get closer to find out more about that. Jop Jop and the bot are now hidden in that northern room. You don't know exactly where. Normally I'd ask, oh, can you talk your way through the situation? Again, you know, in the interest of keeping things moving and also just this particular situation, parlay is not an option. This thing does not seem to be, doesn't seem to have much intelligence and this disgusting job job is not paying any attention to you. There's really nobody to talk to. So it seems like your only choice is to fight because as soon as some of you hit that fog, you realize that it's, there's, it feels toxic and these things look dangerous. You're going to have to fight your way through if you want to find job job because these things are guarding her. We'll do that after the break. It's a good thing I've got resilience to poison damage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good, good. The break will be five minutes long, as usual. I encourage you to discuss, you know, tactics. So, you know, what do you, what can you guess about fighting these things? You know, these big, these little gloppy sort of child-sized things, and while operating in the smoke. But also talk about your backstories while you're out there. It's a great opportunity to talk about the backstories. Just now. And we'll take a break. I just stop there. No, let's give it a go. I might change my mind later. So we're back from the break, and we are going to go into a set piece combat. Uh, this is crunchy by the book combat. This is, um, you know, we'll have a variety of different combat things. This is a very solid part of D&D where uh, the rules are uh, quite tightly enforced, square by square. The math is, is quite strongly enforced because it makes the balance of the decisions really interesting. Uh, again, you're trying this out. If this is not your style, there's other RPGs that make combat much faster, but some people really like the tactical complexity of what's going on, the kind of stories you can tell when you're sort of following these things as they go. And this often has life or death stakes when you have a big fight at the end of a session. Now, I try to teach different things with each combat, and here's a few things that, that are worth learning as you fight with this. One is combat versus obscured enemies. I mentioned smoke and darkness, so you're going to have to deal with the fact that you can't always see your enemies, or you might have to get close to your enemies in order to see them. That'll be a bit different than the last fight, for sure. Melee attackers, you'll have a real chance to shine. The last one, you know, <coughs> people who could shoot had a lot, a lot to contribute, and you still do. But this time, the ones who are in melee are going to have quite a lot because it's probably going to involve getting close to your targets and hacking away at them is going to be important. This is also a bit different in that you have to, these things are blocking the passage. You can tell by their body language. They're sort of acting like bodyguards, and your objective is jop jop beyond them. Well, you can't move through enemies. You have to push them or kill them to, or, or somehow you know, make friends with them uh, to get them to go. But in combat, uh, let's forget that last option. Um, so you want to uh, reach a goal by getting through enemies. You have a choke point here. You'll discover that choke points are difficult because you can get in each other's way. If somebody's shooting through you, then the monsters are a little bit easier to, to uh, they're a bit better guarded. So being in the way of somebody shooting is a bit of a problem. Um, sometimes you're on the wrong side of a blockade that's forming. So uh, that's something that this will teach as you get through that choke point. You'll learn something about damage resistances. Let's just say that certain things don't take damage the way you expect. Sometimes you guess, usually you just learn by process of elimination, and you remember what you learn, what kinds of targets are susceptible to different kinds of damage. So that will come in here. And next thing is areas of effect. There are certain zones of the, of the battlefield that will do things to you if you're standing in them. So that's a new concept that we'll be introducing. Right, so the combat setup, you're in this big round chamber. Here's the silver crack that you came through. Let me uh, do this uh, top down so people in the video can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, you, you're, you've positioned your characters there, that's good. Um, the two uh, brown and yellow chips I generally are always enemies. Uh, gray chips will be the same. The reason I have over there that white star uh, with Jop next to it is that you know that Jop Jop is in this room, but you have no idea where. Sometimes you can shoot at something you can't see if you know their exact location. You just shoot out with disadvantage. You don't even know her location, so that's why I've sort of put her off to the side. So there's no, there's no hitting her until you get in there probably deeper because the smoke is so full. The smoke in here is thick enough that as it wafts into the room and rises up and certainly is thick in that room, it is called obscures. So you can basically see through one square of it, you know, dimly, but you can't see through two squares of it. It's just too thick as you go. Um, so it's so it's impossible to see certain targets. Uh, you do know that she's gleefully experimenting in the room beyond. She keeps talking to that bot, and you keep hearing that sort of ripping sound, that 
tumbling sound of rocks and uh, the sound of plops as things hit the ground, just like these two things hit the ground before they faced you. All right. Yep, I've got that. And I've got other enemies. I've got, uh, you can tell by the plopping sound, there's more enemies we found, but you cannot see them. You don't even know their location. They're hidden for now. All right. Now, normally we would all roll separate initiatives. This group is large enough that I'll use a sped up initiative thing where I'm going to get used to rolling initiative, but we'll go clockwise and counterclockwise in a particular way. We did this last time. Everybody roll initiative, which is this one way to say roll a d20 and add your dexterity bonus. Right now, your dexterity bonus is always the same. Why? As your initiative. 18. 18. 17. 11. And find out amongst yourselves, just say out loud and find out who's the highest one. 17. Yeah, I'm 19. 12. Oh, I see. Yeah, find out the highest one, find out the second one. Yeah, so I've already been 19. Is anyone being 19? Is anyone 19? Or higher than 19? Who's got an 18 or so? I'm 18. Okay, who else is 18? Yep, who else is 18? I heard there's two 18s. Oh, I rolled an 18, but it works out to 17. Okay, okay, great. So that means that, so we'll take, we'll start with the highest initiative and we'll rotate now clock to get to you as fast as possible because you're the second highest. That's just a quick, dirty way to do initiative to make it semi-fair, where initiative means something. But eventually, all have different initiatives, exactly what you roll. So sorry if you rolled high and you're going the wrong direction. That's just how it goes. After we go around is, is where the monsters will go, um, and the monsters might go right away. So we'll start with you when it's the turn for the player. But let's see, <laughs> let's see how fast these things go. Uh, as you do this, uh, remember that location is very big, especially if you're dealing with dumb enemies. They tend to go after whoever's closest to them. So if you're managing whether you're getting hit or not, proximity is going to be the big thing. Also remember, you know, if you're a tank, if you're kind of in the way, a monster might attack you instead of running past you to go after somebody else. All right. You just happen to have three tanks in the one area. <coughs> Yeah, I think we get this party on the road with these yeah, things. If there's any doubt these things are hostile, well, you're about to find out that they are. Might be in the uh, I thought that'd be fair. Uh, that <laughs> another one that's <laughs> folder there. Oh yeah, is, is your chip down on the board? Make sure your chip's on the board. It would be in this thing. In the back. Is that one? It could be. Uh, yeah, so make sure you don't take somebody else's. Yeah. It's the thief one. You have Do you have a thief one? Mm -hmm. There's a yeah. thief one in the back. I'm a thief. Yep. That's a thief. Or a criminal. Yeah, that was okay. a thief one. Yep, that's a thief that one. one. That's you. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. I don't think we use it last time, so I think yeah. it definitely yeah, must yeah. be it. Cool. Okay. Where, where do you want to yeah. be? Uh, um, Generally, point. Over here, yeah. over up here. You're a thief, maybe. Here, somewhere, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right, yes, these things go first. And uh, they do sort of a combination of uh, attacking and guarding. So. One of the first things, so the ones that the, uh, when they squat and guard like they're doing now, you hear a voice in your head, like it's telepathy or something. Like you could tell that they're sending it to you, but the voice doesn't come from their mouths. It just appears in your head. And it's very strange, you know, language. It feels, it's in common, but, you know, it just feels like it's not what they usually speak. And it says something like this. You are food. We come to feast. She keeps the door open. If you stop her, you die first. All right. Uh, they have this massive uh, fart to punctuate their uh, to punctuate their their thing, and now. It fills up this area, and it's coming closer, and those are at the edge, like, oh, so man. Nine twenty. <laughs> so can we still <laughs> see them now? Uh, so, yes, now, now they, have, they have vanished from sight. But you'll see some of them real soon, because some of them are going to move. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll do, just so I keep track, so we'll do the yellow first. Oh, so, who goes first? Well, Who's the book? A book would be a wizard would be a book. Who's the pink? That's me. I'm a cleric. Oh, okay, good. All right. I was worried about you for a second there. All right, so uh, this thing reaches out with its claws and slashes you with 12. Compare that to your AC. Your AC is higher than that, I assume. Uh, As a cleric. I see. It's in the shield oh, there. Oh, that's an There you go. And then uh, with a bite, it uh, tries to bite at you. Uh, oh, and uh, as it comes out, you get to see what it looks like. What is this it that I speak of? It looks like this. briefly show this to our viewers at home. Oh. It's a puppy. 
<laughs> and these things are kind of child size, but they're not acting like children. And they are like disgusting puppy. smelling. It's a kitty. It's a cute little puppy. <laughs> <laughs> The face actually thinks of a makes even of a bat. It's like a bat, yeah. Mm. That's what I thought of. Yeah, the face That's is cute. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that can give it a pat, but no chance because it's trying to bite you. So, it uh, is not effective against you. Uh, this one, well, let's see. Let's just. Uh, one has run out here and runs up to you. Who's the orange shield? That's me. Okay, in the front line. It claws at you as it gets close. It rolls in 11 against your AC. 18. All right, it tries to bite you for eight. No, also not very strong. It chips a tooth. Yes, <laughs> right. Uh, this one runs out here. I think it's going to go here first. So who's the orange spear? All right, so a claw for a 10. Oh, your armor class is better than that. Who's the Lord Spear? Okay, yes. yes. Well chosen targets. It tries to bite you for a 19. 19 is higher than your AC. Yes, it is. All right, you are slashed by his teeth for six points of damage. All right, well, show's on the road. Okay, let me find where I could sit properly. And see, I originally wanted to stay back. And this one runs over, sort of around his compatriots, goes for you here. Who's the pink shield? All right, a claw at you for a 13 against your AC. 18. All right, and the bite is a 21, which is enough to get past that, and you are bit for four points of damage. Again, I'm rolling this on my computers to make the math faster because combat's long enough as it is, but I'm generally rolling, I generally just follow the dice as they go because I like the story that way. This passage, you, can, you, you can't you can see them, but you can shoot at them uh, because you can hear them. They're being not being very stealthy. So these things that are far back here, you can shoot at them with disadvantage. Uh, but the problem is that uh, they're, they're there. On your turns, you have to do that. So a few of them have filled that, and the passage seems to be filled. You can just tell by the sound that two of them are in the passage trying to get through. And that is just the first round that we're doing, and we will move on to the initiative that we had. So we go to side A, and we'll go clockwise from there. So side A, pick your target and go for it. I'm going to pick one that is right in front of me. Right on, okay. Yeah, so right in front. what are you going to do to it? Use your weapon. I'm going to use my weapon, yeah. Okay. It's quite small. Right. Child size. Yeah. I'm just gonna pick it with my sword. <laughs> Good. And cut his head so off. Give me the color and the number that, that you're going. Yeah, it's fine. Just, just tell me. Are you going for number three? Are you moving closer? Or are you gonna go for number? Th yeah. You maybe yeah. move a little closer. Get to number two. Okay. Number two. Okay. Yellow two. I'm ready. So roll your d20. So when you do attack, you'll be a d20 plus uh, the number next to that weapon is what you add. Neighbors, help out uh, your neighbor. Make sure that the right thing's being added. Oh. 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 Yeah. Three. Plus, plus your. Um, you thought, yeah, it's well. good to do the math anyway, even though you suspect that's a little on the low side. Well, these things are squishy, and they're not very fast Eight. on their feet. Eight. Nope, not enough. It dodges out of the way as your sword clatters on the, into a cushion next to it. Uh, that is your turn side A. Now, remember, you can move, attack, and then continue moving. So uh, most of you can move six squares in the course of your turn, and you can mix it up, right? So if you want to get deeper or, or get out of the way or in the way, Remember that. I'll try to, I, I don't want to tell this every time, so do remember that. You can attack in the middle of your move before or after. Also, you can do a bonus action. If anything on your character sheet says that you can do as a bonus action, such as your second wind, you get to do that as well as an action. Your action is using your weapon or casting a spell in general. Okay, so next is clockwise, and, you'll, and if you're next on clockwise, be on deck and be ready to make your decision. So what are you going to do? So I'm the green axe. Yeah, green axe. Can we attack diagonally? Uh, yes, you can. Okay, so I'm going to move in between the pink shield and the... Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. Over here? Yeah. And attack that. Number three, okay. Uh, roll. Actually, I was going to go after four. Okay, sure. Yeah. Yep. Go again. Yeah, roll against number four. So roll your okay. weapon or whatever you're doing next. It's going to be the brain axe. All right. That's good. Oh, no. Ten. <laughs> Oof, okay, with a bit of a swing and a miss, so that yeah. does not work. Again, you can continue moving, but otherwise I'll move on to the next one. Oh, no, no. Um, second win, please. Okay, yeah. all right. So uh, <laughs> didn't you didn't just have a short rest? Weren't you at full health before? But I did got six damage. Oh, you yeah. just took six damage. You're going to do second win proactively. You're right. You got work. So that's a bonus action. You roll a d10 and add one because you are a level one warrior. Yep, you've got the right one there. 
Good wise, yes, wise to toss yourself up. Okay, so and four one. hit points. Oh, mm -hmm. four. So add four hit points, but you can still act. You can move and attack. Good um, well, I'm with. attacking this one that just attacked me. Okay, okay. good. And uh, roll, after you're using your weapon, roll that against that number, yellow number three. I'm ready. 14 plus my uh, 5 plus 5, so 19. Okay, with 19, yes, that is enough to sink into it. Roll your damage as your sword, great axe, your axe chops it. So your damage is written next to great axe. Uh, 1d12. Okay, yeah, and if, if you can okay. see your damage, you'll go and find the dice necessary. You can pass those dice around so your dice are ready when you're ready to roll. Plus the 12 sided die, it's got pentagons on the side. It's all pentagons. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yes, it's good. Just go, but try to get your uh, get your own die back because we can oh, no, 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 move no, no, faster. No. Plus three, you got four. No, no. Yep, plus another three. Yep, exactly. So that's four four points of damage plus, to it. Plus three. Oh, sorry, so four. Yeah. Okay, four, okay, four points that. of damage. Yeah. A good chunk goes out of it. As you do, it doesn't bleed red blood. This is black ichor is oozing out of it. All right, next. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna attack four. Right okay, go me. for it. Yeah, so, going for yellow four. Okay. So that's a two. Oh no! With that, that yeah, it ducks underneath well. as your swing. What kind of weapon do you have? Uh, warhammer. Yeah, the warhammer. Yeah, you swing the warhammer, but it ducks down. Next is you. Okay, I'm going to attack uh, number one. Okay. Eighteen plus my attack bonus. Yes, that's so right. So twenty-two. Twenty-two. I'm excellent go hit. Going for it with my warhammer. Can I get a D8, yeah. please? Mm -hmm. A D8. Yeah, yeah, good. So you see what we're doing here? You go and start distributing dice, so you're ready to roll your damage so as you turn. Four plus two, six. Six, very good. Nice and fast. Okay, so take six. Again, you crush it a bit, and that's doing very well. Next is you. Now remember, as a rogue, if you attack something, uh, an enemy that has a friend next to it, you have a chance to do extra damage. Yes, you have to roll your d20 and add the attack bonus to see if you hit. Yep, but first you got to move, so, so you're, you're, you're out of range. So where, which enemy do you want to go up to? I don't know. Um, number one. Okay, good. So one, two, three, four, five. Yep. So you can you can fit right there. That's as far as you can get. You just make it. You stab out with your short sword. Roll a d20 and add your. Yeah. Attack bonus. That's right. Exactly. And this would be in his case is dexterity plus two. Twenty. Plus five. Twenty. Plus five. Oh, so when you roll a 20, you just yell, yeah, not 20, because that's a critical hit. Oh, no, right? So, okay. And that's amazing, because this thing is next to an enemy, so you roll extra damage, and you roll the extra damage twice as well. So the great thing about critical hits when you roll a 20, uh, for weapons, not for spells, because your spells are powerful enough, mm -hmm. thank you, is you take this d6 and roll it twice, add them up. Yeah, roll the two together. Oh, we'll add three to it, yep. Oh, six was six! Oh my god! Jesus. That's 12 plus 3 is 15, right? Mm -hmm. Now, yes. because you have what's called sneak attack damage, because an enemy is next to it, mm -hmm. you get to roll normally an extra, so how much was that? 15 already. Exactly. Normally you'd only roll one of these, but because it's a critical, uh, you roll the natural one, you roll two more of those, so roll that twice more. We'll add oh, to 15. Okay. Holy cow, that's <laughs> number one. It's, that's overkill. Five it is an overkill. Six. Six. 21 damage with one hit. That thing splatters into little bits. Dust. 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 With your short sword, and it just, yeah, exactly. I think it's so bloody, like it gets on the people on either side, and this black, <laughs> stinking <laughs> ichor, you know, it's like, oh, it just smells and sucks into your clothes and all that. It's, it's not laundry day. Like he, he's on it's the not laundry day. day. <laughs> but this thing is super dead. Well done. All right. Um, <laughs> you're as far as you can, so we're going to the next one. Okay. Right, you, I will, you attack. Attack. I will right. attack. I'll keep those. You'll, you'll oh. use them again and again. Oh, okay. Yeah, everybody should have their own dice. So make sure you have your oh, own okay. damage dice. How would you like to be a tank, right? Yeah, there's plenty <laughs> of dice. Plenty of dice. So, because so if you don't have your dice ready, please get them ready. Because it's in the fart, can I still swing it? Or do I need to move into the fart? Uh, the two you can see, yeah. So you can only right. see through one square of, of fog. Okay. Fart, if I fog. use light, will that illuminate? Unfortunately not. Darkness would be great. Be That's great for dim light, but no yeah, obscure but like fog and stuff. It just makes it far brighter. It would just, like, it would brighter. just be glaring. Yeah, exactly. Right. Right. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smack two with my Warhammer. So okay. Uh, 15, uh, 19. Okay, That's good. That's a hit. And roll your damage. This is yellow two. What's that? Eight. Eight, okay, good. You uh, you smack with the Warhammer and part of it, again, it kind of crushes in. It's like... It's just this weird. You don't feel like there's bone underneath there. So like this internal organs feel really strange. Like you know anatomy really well, but it seems like it was sort of a tough sort of putty that they're made of, and sort of just sinks in and like it just keeps moving. It's really strange. I have to goop my. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next for Ellen. 
So can I attack three with my um, bow? Yes, you can, and because you're between two people, you get a clear shot. So yeah, you have a nice clear shot to it. And this is where getting in each other's way is important, but you've got a nice angle, so go for it. So 12 plus 7. Yes, that's a hit. Plus. Do your damage against number three. Um, a D8. D8, yeah. Yeah, but please try to have your own dice. It's, it's great that you're borrowing dice from each other, but by the time comes around, have your own damage so dice. It makes together. it faster. And it all together. Very good. That one's been hit once before, and now you can tell it's bloodied. So uh, I will start flipping things over uh, when I'm really tracking monster hit points properly. That means you're more than halfway through its hit points. It just means that chunks of it have fallen off and its skin is open. And you can see that inside, yeah, it just doesn't have regular organs. just got different kind of textures of black and gray goo inside this being exposed. It's not a natural creature. Okay. Can I move a little bit as well? Yes, you can. You can move up to six squares. Uh, diagonals uh, are fine. Bit. Okay, all right. Yeah, you want to sort That's of... One you want to read your angles. Action. Yeah. <laughs> if you're shooting through a friend, this thing will have at a plus two to its armor class. So if you were to hit the target now, remember it has a plus two to its AC because you're shooting through a friend. Okay. So that's, that's just something to keep in mind, you shooters. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to move up just mm -hmm. up to here. Yeah, uh, what color are you? I'm the book. Yeah, we're going to do that for each other. You can scoot the map around yeah. as long as we put it back cool. on where people can see it. Um, and then I want to do mole earth just up here. Ah, yes. Now and then I want to run back. Okay, great. So mold earth is something where you, you can't see it, but you can you can pick a spot that you can't yeah. see. Because I don't think your spell says ground you can see, just as a no, point. No, it just yeah. has to be somewhere. So you concentrate, you know that you've made the ground rough and spiky and bumpy, and you know that these things will have a hard time moving through, and other people have time moving through as well. It makes one square of, of, of earth. Is it like here? around? Yeah, there? it's just right in front. Of oh, right in front. Okay, yeah. All right. So we'll just we'll shade that where it's difficult terrain. It takes twice as much work to go through, so it takes an back extra movement right up. and back through there. <laughs> mm -hmm. It'll also, your friends will suffer the same problem as well. There First you go. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? It's the, oh, sorry, it's my turn. Monster's yeah, turn. Hooray! Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So these things create a cloud around them, and you all... Sorry, more fart. Exactly, more fart. So the fart is extending around in a couple squares around from this one. Uh, instead of making it nice and round, I'll also have to make it sort of squarish. They do square farts. It's even more disgusting. Yeah. And everything, uh, you hear it all coming from back here, so the entire wall is moves out by, by another. So you all are in the cloud. In the cloud. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Smells <laughs> terrible, and uh, we'll get to that. If you start your turn in that cloud, something will happen. So, was, yep. got that. Yep, got that, got that. No one's on fire. If it's poisonous, no one's on fire. No exactly. <laughs> no breath weapon from you. <laughs> no, 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 no breath fire from me, no. Okay. No. So, we've got a bit more of a front line. Uh, I will start generating things here. I'll trade this one out for this. So it's not the same, not the same <laughs> goopy thing. I'm just using these numbers for convenience. So one sort of runs out, maybe replaces this one. You know, don't worry about the numbers here exactly. It seems like they always have a couple guards here. Uh, so mm, no. It seems like this one sort of takes a step forward. But they grunt to each other in a language none of you understand. They seem to have maybe have a little more intelligence and tactics than they do. They call out to this one. These, like once it's got splattered, they sort of reacted differently. They seemed a little, a little surprised. Maybe they're being more, uh, more conservative. These two in here, they sort of hunker down. They seem to be getting ready for something. It's like they're, it's like, like they raise their claws. They're kind of like on the balls of their little weird feet. It seems like they're ready for something. Um, this is something you'll discover. It's a tactic called held action. You can do it too. What they've done is they've used their turn to say. Once something comes in range, I get to attack it as a, as a reaction. You can do that as well. So there's a little tactic that I'll tell you. So let's say this one you know is, you know is back there somewhere, um, and maybe you can hear it. So if you had a chance to shoot it, you would. But we'll just move up with these things attacking. So now it seems like guarding is more important, but these things are still stuck in. Number two is going to go for one of these two targets. If it's odd, it's going to be the pink book. It's even, so it's going to be you. Now, if I ever have a monster attack somebody, if you're next to it and you're a tank, you say, hey, can I get attacked instead? Start volunteering that. It's a way that I can kind of manage a large fight to make you feel more tank-like. Mm -hmm. But I think you're nice and strong, so you probably want to take that hit there. Okay. Okay, well, that's fine. I mean, yeah, that, well, you have no choice. Yeah, somebody can rescue it from you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> somebody I can no rescue choice. it from you, but, but you, can't, you can't slough it off on someone else. So it claws <laughs> at you. Uh, with a 15 against your armor class. What is your armor class, Sade? 
16. The ah, just enough. So it hits your armor. The claws try to penetrate, but doesn't quite get inside. So it goes for your neck with a bite. Well, it's short, so, and you're tall. So maybe try to see a gap in your armor, but with nine, no, your armor, you step out of the way as its teeth gnash around, and that does not work for it. Uh, number, let's do the next higher one. This one that's wounded is going to go for somebody around it. I'll just, just see here. That's going to take you with the orange spear, unless a volunteer wants to take it off of you. Nope. All right, so the claw against you with the orange spear is five against that AC. I'm sure you jump out of the way there. And with a 15, which is the orange spear? Who are you? Yes, okay. 15. What's, oh, yeah, you've got very good armor. Again, your very solid chainmail absorbs that. This one here is going to go after one of these two. It'll go after the green axe. Unless somebody wants to take it off them, just volunteer if that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I guess you, Green Axe, is a 14. I guess, 17. I guess your AC, oh, good. We got the big steel up front, heavily armored to seven. No, you are forming a wall of steel against these attackers. These two have obviously been held on, so they don't do anything, but remember that warning. But now it seems apparent that if you want to get to Jop Jop, you're going to have to start moving forward. That is the turn of the monsters. We're going to go around and you are starting in the fart cloud. You're the first one to discover what this is. You have to do a constitution saving throw. Remember, when you do a constitution saving throw, it's in the little box, not, oh, yes. the, not the big box. Yep, because for some of you, it's a little higher than, than, than your... Yeah, so some of you have a bonus to that because you're class. Six, you cannot resist the effect of this fetid cloud over you. When you fail your constitution saving throw, you are poisoned until the start of your next turn. So this will only happen for the start of your next turn, but this turn basically that happens. And while you're poisoned, you can't you can either take you can take either an action or a bonus action on your turn. So you can't take both if you're suffer. So you can't do a you can't do your your uh, second wind and attack now if you're okay. if you're subject to this poison. But also when you're poisoned in, and you can't take reactions. Reactions are what you use to like hit things that are moving away from you or put up a shield spell, stuff like that. So that's dangerous as well. You also just have the poisoned condition, which means you have disadvantage this turn to strike at something. Anything that involves you know, hitting or striking, attacking, you're going to have a disadvantage side A. But based on that, you can still pick your target and go for it. Mm. What do you want to hit? What do you want to hit? I'll go for that number two. That okay. Two. This, by the way, so... Like right if you, there. for example, if you cast a spell, you don't have disadvantage. Uh, this, the disadvantage applies to like, you know, d20s that you roll. Okay, good. All right, go ahead and roll. Now you take two d20s in your hand at the same time. Roll them both at the same time. And you have to take the lower of the two. Seven. It's a lower. Yep, take the lower one, but you add your bonus to whatever the lower one is. And this, these things are pretty squishy, so do all your math on your lower Three. one. So it's yeah. a strength. It's, a, it? it's a pin. Uh, yeah, so it's based on the yeah, be strength plus two, so it would be her strength bonus plus two because she's using a hand weapon. Yeah, so it's a 12 altogether. 12 is enough still. Ah, these things are quite slow and not very well armored, so do your damage against what? Number two, I believe it is. Number two. Go for it. Roll your damage there. Side A. So that is next to the uh, same weapon that you go. No. No, which one I the D12 that we have over here. Yeah, again, everybody, make sure you have your damage dice. So I know you're being helpful handing them around, but please, if you use it, Get it back in your hands, oh, right? Okay. So make sure you have your own damage yeah, dice. Speed okay. things up. There's plenty of dice in that bag, so make sure you have your own nine? damage nine. die. Yep, nine. Yes. Nice. Where's the, what did you use for it? The, the sword? And if there's a yeah. decent yeah. one, it's yeah. yeah. oh. 14. Wait. Yeah. No, you were meant to use a D8. If you're using the long sword? Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's a D8. Okay, so roll a D8, that's fine. So you still hit it, so but the damage is a D8. So, uh, yeah. yep, go, thank you for that help. Very good. So six. So six. That's a three. Yeah, nine. so adding your strength. Well, good, okay, you take nine out of it. It is barely standing. You slash it, it staggers. You think it's going to go down. Pieces are hanging off it, but <gasps> it's still standing up. So bloodied, but unfortunately not quite enough to take it down. Just short. Side is done. You're next. Okay, I'm going for number three there. Okay, yep. The wounded one. Am I starting in the cloud? Yes, you're starting the clouds. If you're a constitution saving throw, pretty much everybody apart from these two, please remember that you'll do that throw. At the end oh, of my turn. And it's plus the constitution yep. saving, so 19. 19, yes. You resist it and you're unaffected by the farts this time. Yep. Now do your rest I'm of your turn. Going after the three. Number so three. 
Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you get to describe how you fuck this up. That's the fun part. <laughs> That's the only one. What goes wrong? Well, the smell was painful. <laughs> yeah, the, the smell eventually got to me. Maybe you resist. You were spending so much time like covering your mouth, like yeah. pulling up your nice silk scarf and things. You didn't really have time to do an effective <laughs> attack. So, unaffected by the smell, thanks to your silk scarf, but not very good for fighting. Okay, next, please. Okay, so I remember about moving. You can move. Um, oh, that's a D twelve, and it's a very common oh, mistake. So, uh, uh, get a D twenty yeah. instead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's better. Nineteen plus. Yeah. Uh, my four, four, yeah, 20. Plus your weapon bonus? Oh, yeah, sorry, yes, your uh, yeah. constitution saving yeah. throw? Yes, yes. okay, you resist it. 23, good. All right, great. Okay. Uh, attacking this one we tried before. Okay, yes, three. the wounded yeah. one. Yes. See if we can take it down. Go ahead and do your d20 with a weapon attack, I assume. Oh, no, good. Four. Oh, no, plus bad luck. Oh, so nine, nine, no, yeah. nine, no, it's it just steps out of the way just in time to evade it. Your turn. All right, saving throw. Uh, 12. <laughs> that one plus two, so fourteen. Fourteen is enough. So okay. closer, you're a bit disgusted, but you yeah. still manage. Um, if I move away from this guy, does he attack me? Like, if you move attack? entirely away from me, yeah. So yeah. If, if, if you put space between you and it, it gets a free attack at you. But uh, it might be the best thing. This is part of the tactics yeah. we're teaching. Well, yeah, what I might do is cast sacred flame. Okay, yeah, guy. great, yeah, so this is a great example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly, so Sacred Flame, <laughs> oh, it's in, it's in the fog. Is it flammable? The problem oh, is it flammable? It has to have <laughs> No, oh, but yeah, Sacred Flame, it only works against a target you can see. Oh, and I can't see him. Yeah, so you can't see oh, more through more than, uh, oh, wait, this one, you're here. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. only one square. You barely see it. Yes, oh, okay, you can. Cool. Uh, so I roll, mm -hmm. well, yeah, so what I do, no, so Sacred Flame is where I do a saving throw on behalf of the monster. Oh, right, okay. And Sacred Flame, I believe, is a dexterity saving throw, and we'll probably describe it. There, I've, I've got that right. I rolled very high, so it dot as the flames form, either what coming up from below or up or down from above. Right. Yeah, so coming yeah. down from above, it sort of sees that coming, scurries out of the way. It seems to sort of know, like it reacted to this divine intervention with a lot of knowledge. Like you know, it seemed to be really ready for this, right. and it sort of looks at you like it just gives you this obscene gesture as it sees that you're a cleric. It seems like real <laughs> hatred in its eyes, more than usual, and it scurries out of the way. And again, remember you can move before or after your turn. I won't remind you of all that, but if you want to position yourself, you can. I'll stay there. Yeah, you can start edging around. So if you move like here or here, it, it wouldn't get a free attack, attack against you. So you start getting closer to your target okay. without without taking the chance. So I can move from there to there with no. Yeah, you can move issue. here, for example. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, okay. you're never putting space between oh, you yeah. and an enemy. Okay. So you so can sort of there. sidle around. That's yeah. A good position. All right, yeah. Okay, like good that. position. All right. Constitution saving throw good. is 15. Very good. That's, That's enough. You resist. Okay. Um, so I'm going to actually move myself to here and I'm going to try attack with my hammer. Very good. Try to two. thump it with a hammer. Try this is a very badly wounded one. See if you can take it down. Um, 16. Yes, uh, good. All right. Roll your right. damage, but surely it's enough. Let's just see how spectacular Ooh, it is. 10. 10. <laughs> oh, slam. Again, splat. It just pops because of the hammer. And it goes into little flurries, and it is absolutely gone. Good job. I'm going to swap this out for that. So it can Get the right number of chips. Yeah, Good job. Yeah, okay, yeah. another one down, and awesome. they're now looking like they start talking about themselves. Like they've they've got a change of tactic. They're obviously trying because they're going down a little too fast. You are next. You are in, in the between. cloud. Yeah. So roll a d20 with a Constitution saving throw. Yeah. You'll be adding that number one. there. Okay, 13. that is just enough to resist. Nearly disgust you, but you're mm -hmm. fine. Okay. That's all nearly disgust me. <laughs> So I can so um, have to roll for your attack. Oh, yeah, 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 choose, yeah, choose yeah. the target. This is where getting each other's way. So you can you can move all the way around. You can move one, oh, two, okay. three, four. But then you then this thing will get a free attack against. You can move over here. Again, you can sort of get it to this thing. Dot. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, yeah so try to let him do the math on that one. So he can get a chance to figure it out himself. 19, very good. Okay, good. And do your damage, please. So that's the, just one of the D6s. Yeah, this time without rolling D20. Uh, without, you didn't roll a natural 20, but still, that's a good one. Bringing back horrible memories. Nice, another six. Because you're a rogue and it's next to an enemy, you get to roll an extra d6 this time because it does count as sneak attack damage. So that's six plus your three, that's nine points of damage. Whoa, and another six! Holy cow, 15 points of damage, another banger, and this thing splatters as well. You've taken out two! Nasty Slayer. Thank you so much. Fantastic, okay, great. Yeah. Exactly, make it rain. Okay, good. Good job. What are you going to do? Um, I'm going to. Yeah, it's definitely time to press on. You feel like, ah, oh, you got to get I back can move there. Five squares with 25 feet. You can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, I'm I'm stumbling go. through the fog a bit. You yeah. I'm gonna one, one, two. I'm gonna yeah. Constitution yeah. saving throw. Oh, oh yeah. Constitution saving oh. throw. Thank you. It's very good to have the rules. Make 13, it more fun. Four. 10, 15. Okay, as you get close to this thing, this thing's got its claw ready. It takes a free, it's yep. basically going to do this, the thing that held against you. So before you get a chance to attack it, mm -hmm. it lashes out with its claw with a 14. I think. Okay, and then it bites at you with a 22. That's oh. a critical hit. Oh. So I rolled a 20. So my damage, I roll on my damage twice. Luckily, I rolled low. You take five points of bitten slashing damage. So you lose five points as that thing gets ready. Mm -hmm. This thing over here also has a claw back, but it's also kind of looking around. It's listening for all you, so it seems like that yellow is cocked and loaded. But now you're up next to it. You can do whatever you like. Right. Somebody with a heal to heal me. I've got three hit points. Take one. Take one. <laughs> okay. You know what you want to say? Yeah, okay. 19. Uh, you got to be able to touch I'm, him. But you will be going. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm 13. I'm, 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 I'm 23. 23. Very good. Do your damage against brown number three, because that's definitely high enough. Pretty. Um, you should. Eight. Yeah, eight. Yeah, we'll okay, go good. You've done the math. Good job. All right. Yep. You take a chunk out of that one. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. I scurry out of the way, is that one so going to be or either of these? It has the opportunity, well, the opportunity well, to. Well, it's used as a reaction, but that one can use the reaction to hit you. But it's already chosen not to hit you, so you can guess. Well, maybe it's decided not to hit you no matter what. All right. Well, I'm going to take. I'm going to get it done quick. Take a chance and move three away. Okay. So if you want to roll, yep. Yep. If I roll, it's high. I'll start hitting you. You're a cleric. Nope. It glares at you, but does not strike you. That's why I use two. So I've made. Back. Okay, very so good. Yes, I got three hit points. Okay, all right, all right. All right. Yeah, you can move that more back. Is that a block or is that just a different? No, it's just, it just costs yeah. two to move into it instead gotcha. of one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can move all the way back or you can move partly. You don't have to move all the way. You can get closer to the cleric, but that's up to you. If you want if you want the cleric to heal you, you might want to stay close oh. to the cleric. You might not move that far back, but it's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. So either one of us. Yeah. Um, I've used my good, good, good tactics. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. 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 Behind. Okay, what do you do, Ellen? Um, can I see this guy because there's only one block? Yes, yep, oh, right next to you. Yep. Can yeah. I go over there? Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, because this, this would normally fill it in, but yeah, you found a good spot. Nice. Plus seven. Yes, okay. good. You do your damage against it as an arrow sinks into it, and that is yellow four. Hasn't been scratched yet. Do I do my damage? Yes, you Sorry. do. So five, six, nice. seven, eight. Good, okay, eight. Yep, again, you've knocked it down a bit there. Good job. Uh, still holding strong for now. Next. Uh, move up to here. Yep, go ahead and yeah, help him out there. In. Yeah, into the far cloud. It only affects dexterity or whatever. <laughs> oh, and I believe you started in the fart cloud, so you need to roll a dexterity set, uh, a, a constitution. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, good for you. No, yeah, only if you start the turn. In the okay. Cloud. You can cool. hold your breath for a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I um, create bonfire on top of this little bastard? Ah, interesting. So I'll let me read this because I because uh, yeah, again, this is a great thing about these area attacks. So you see, this this is why I'm sort of showing you the difference between these different things. You notice that some things, the spells are just an area you can see, or uh, just a, you pick an area within distance, despite it being obscured. Well, I, oh, on ground you can see okay. within range. Okay, then one. can yeah. I uh, mold earth again and hit him, hit this one up here? Yes, yes, okay. Mold earth actually only happens on dirt you can see within range. You'll, you, scaredy cat, will have to get close to use your mold earth next time. Let's say, okay. let's say that the fog wasn't quite so okay. thick when you cast the first time. Um, it only ground you can <laughs> see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Screw it. We're shielding. Uh, okay, well, you shield, shielding. you would do only reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, so, so the, well, you have to get hit to do it, so you can definitely still use an offensive spell. Okay, um... Can I just hold my turn? 
Uh, yeah, you can, but you know, every turn counts. So do you have anything offensive they can do, or get close to something and cast I a bonfire? Do what they did. Yeah, yeah. You can if somebody comes close that they whether they do, you're not sure. Because you, you get here and cast. If you get here, you're moved to that. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Five spaces. Five uh, spaces. Yeah, I'm just gonna hold my turn. I've got nothing. Okay. All right. Wait, do you want to take a step out of the funk first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah. their turn. Constitution wise. <laughs> The intention was that you were anyway. Oh, bad Yeah. Oh, you're still in the fog. Yeah, you're in the fog anyway. You have to participate now. Try as you might. Everybody's in it. Everyone. These things have decided to fall back tactically. This one, as it goes, there's some free shots that get taken against it. So uh, you can see yep. it. So you with the green axe do an attack against it. Okay, good, good, good. That's, that already has yeah. damage. Yeah, sure. Green axe, uh, orange spear. You can attack against it. So I've got yes. ten. Against oh my it. goodness! Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Um, Seventeen plus uh, five. Uh, Fantastic! 20. You get a shot at it. Just everybody. Can, you can choose to. Of course, you're using a reaction. You might as well. Everybody's going to try cutting oh, things. I thought, thought it was actually the, oh, the damage that one that we were wrong. Oh, uh, just worth doing, doing hits. This, okay. this will be enough hits, I think. Do it. Uh, oh wow. You can take a shot at us. You you can roll your d20 if you choose. You can take a slash at us. It's running away. It's trying to run back, but they did not count on this. I'm going to go as well. Exactly, yeah. Then which way you going to go? 12. Surely. 14. 14. You with the orange. You get okay with a 10. All right. Fantastic. I think this one might. Everybody's run by, yeah. So don't bother rolling damage. You learned a couple things. One is these, you know, where you are matters. So mm -hmm. you just easily take slashes. Now, you don't want to make the same mistake running through a bunch of enemies. You can see what happens to you. This thing takes shots from all of you, all of you who rolled at least a 11 or higher. So you figured out his armor class now. 11 is the magic number that you need to roll in order to hit it. You've done that by hitting them enough times. Mm -hmm. And this thing is just torn to ribbons by the time that it gets through. Its last indignity is that it steps on this sort of mold earth and sort of <laughs> slows down. So it is, though, even this, this one is able to take you know, that extra shot at the end. Oh, that's great. They come in here, you Okay. <laughs> well done. Okay. So it's retreating. These things are, again, they're squaring up and they're getting ready to attack. They seem to be uh, trying to square themselves up. And you know that Jop Jop is doing nothing but creating more and more of these things. So time is of the essence. You've got to punch through, right? So getting through there is your next step. Uh, the farts happen. All that stuff's happened. We're now starting with you. And you've got to do a constitution saving throw as usual as we start. Yes. <laughs> Five and two. Five. Oh, for the second yeah. time, you're affected by some of your dragonborn physiology. You know, so you're especially susceptible wow. to this sort of thing. So that's no. fine. All it means is you can't take I'm, both. I'm putting these down. <laughs> 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 not rolling dead dice again. It means that you can't take both the reaction. As a matter of fact, to, to be technical, you know, this is fine. The, uh, I said you can get a free shot. I guess you were the only ones that couldn't get a free shot because you had been affected for a whole turn by that yes. poison. Right. So you were just kind of too sluggish. So yeah, you, 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 you <coughs> tried to raise your sword, and this is how it affects you as well. But the rest of you were okay. So you all still contributed. You still scared it a bit. You uh, are suffered uh, poison, so you have disadvantage on this coming attack, but you can still barrel through, Sine. So, yeah, so your goal as now is to break, kill these things and get through to the other side to find Jop Jop. What you gonna do, Sade? You just failed your, your constitution saving throw, but you can still act. You can move and attack. Can I use my fire? My fire Ooh, no, you fire. sure can. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. it's fine, it's fine. Save your flame. It comes like a cold. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, now you used it at the, uh, uh, to cook the machines. I think mm -hmm. your thing happens per long rest or short rest. Short rest. Ah, okay, that thing recharges that's a short two, rest. That's two times. Yeah, it's going to do so, two targets, okay. Because it's like a cone, I can target both of them. You certainly can. I think you need to step one forward to make sure that the orange shield doesn't get nailed, yeah. but that would be good. Yes. Yeah, I'll move there. <laughs> just, before okay. the, uh, just before the earth. Uh, so. ah, okay, now what is the saving throw that uh, that I'm doing here? Um, what does it say next to your, your breath weapon? It's just to uh, help, uh, help me know what to roll. Uh, breath weapon. Uh, I'm guessing it's a dexterity saving throw. But look yeah. Plus one? Is it plus one? No, 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 no. It's just that. So 50, 50, 15 feet cone. Successful for 2d6. Hmm? Just say what kind of save? <coughs> uh, I think the next one is the same. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the yellow it's one. Four. 
Okay. DC 12. 12, great. Yeah. So I'm trying to make a 12 using the mm -hmm. dexterity. The first one I rolled higher than a 12 plus whatever bonus it is. The yellow one, but only flatten itself, is going to take half damage. This one gets nailed fully. So the brown one takes all damage, the yellow one takes half damage by ducking a little bit. Roll the damage listed there. So there's a damage listed to your fire weapon. Two of these, two d6. Okay. And you notice her disadvantage, her poison state doesn't give her disadvantage because they're doing saving throws. So we see that this is tactics. If you have no choice to have disadvantage, things like spells or breath weapons, you, you, you can use it for a power. Do I add anything to it? Yep, uh, no, I don't think so. So you add that together. Three. Three total. Okay, well, the dice weren't friendly to you there. We cut it in half for this one, uh, dropping all fractions. So two damage and one damage, respectively. I'll do that. And so you can keep oh, moving if you like, yeah. but uh, otherwise, you can uh, hand it off to somebody else. And what's next? You want to move that? I'm just thinking of we should, the we amount should, of. We should um, punch steps. through. Ah, but this one is now more than halfway through, so you, you've charred this one. So this one is now bloodied and sort yeah. of crackling yeah. and a little bit on fire. The other one is doing all right. I'm just saying, I'm just thinking. That the yellow one is steps. still alive. Yeah. yeah, the yellow one's doing fine. The brown one is, is more than halfway dead. Okay, who's next? Go for it. It's combat. We've got to keep it moving. Okay, I'm going to move, move my guy into the, um, yeah. Okay, so by entering that bumpy ground, oh, wait, you, gotta roll yeah, you got to do your space there. One, two, ten, three, ten, four, five. Four, yeah. Fourteen. Okay, fourteen is fine. So the way I've counted it is I'm, I'm counting the number of squares, right? Yeah. Oh, here. So go one, two, three, because I've counted twice by entering that. Oh, that no, I was terrain. one behind it, but uh, that's fine. Yes, two, three, four. Yeah. yeah. So you've only used four squares of your six <coughs> yeah. by moving to a difficult terrain. Okay. So, so next. Meat shield again. Uh, All right. Yes, <laughs> that's your job. And I'll go for the. Yeah, I'll go for the yellow one. Okay. Go for the yellow one. This is going to be bad. Oh, oh yes. Ooh. Bad for them. Bad for them. 23. 23. Oh. Do your damage against that, that one. Good. Good. This is oh. a card that's going to be bad, though. This good. is what we want. Go on. Oh. Oh, 9. Oh, 12. 12 damage against it. Awesome. It's good. So you see it Oh, it is in very bad shape. Here. <laughs> this one, it was holding its action. It was doing that same sort of hunker down thing. And in desperation, it sort of reels back. It sort of lashes out with its foot to try to claw you. So it's going to do its, its held action against you in revenge. It does a five against you to step over that foot. It claws at you with the other foot as it staggers around. With an 18, I think, is just enough to hit you. 18 is Yeah, just it is your armor one. class. Ties go to the attacker. Four slashing damage against you. Okay. Oh, sorry. This thing has also held its action, but has not fired it off. It's waiting for another enemy, you think. Okay, good job. Next okay. is. Constitution 18. Very good. You so, saved yourself yeah, there. Right. Yep. Um, yes, yes. Um, so, javelin long distance, sort of. Uh, oh, ah, okay. Here, sort of, yeah, and try and finish yeah, it. Yeah, javelin, are, are you throwing it? Yes, why not? Yeah, so. Technically, uh, with this, because this corner, it also has cover, sort of firing through someone, but from back here, you've got a clear okay. shot. Uh, so, yeah. that. You're sort of running, you can throw it, and you can continue, but it looks very badass to be, you know, run and throw at the same time. Everybody loves that. Okay. So, go ahead and do that. Roll your attack against it. 16 plus the five. Uh, five. Yes. So All right, like great. You hit it, a jealous. <laughs> oh, sinks into it. Roll your damage against it and see if you can kill it. Uh, which was no, no, no. Um, it's a decent. Yeah, it's been roasted, it's been so it's slashed. Oh. Three, five. Five? Puts it down just enough. You cut it oh, and it's yeah, collapsing yeah. in the goo. When these things are disappearing, by the way, they dissolve into this really disgusting sort of petal, puddle of black slime. And this slime kind of fizzes and sort of turns into vapor and disappears. There's like nothing left afterwards. Every time you've splattered one of these things and the stuff on your clothes is still a bad smell, but at least the goo disappears from your clothes, which is very strange. Again, mm -hmm. this is not so natural you creatures. And everything in front of me. <laughs> just all right, now you can you can move one more square to get deeper in if you like because uh, you know you can sort of hold that hold that space. You know this is the space the bottleneck like they're trying to fill up. If you step more into it, you might sorry, stop them from going in. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. Do you want oh, to? Oh, sorry, uh, that, that was the, I was that was my advice. The no, green axe. So no, I didn't. I'm the green axe. Okay. Yeah. So if you were the green axe, it just retroactively didn't give the advice. Did you want to step closer in to, to help to prevent them I from forming a bottleneck? I couldn't at the time because I've 
Because that other one was still there. Right. I think you still had one space left. No, no, we had the enemy in the way. Ah, that's right. Okay, yeah. You just took out the one that... Ah, that's right, it's still yeah. alive. Okay, my yeah. mistake. All right, yes. So you can keep on running after throwing that javelin. If you've counted your squares, you can keep plumbing. I'm just sort of urging okay. you to get in, yeah, get yeah. stuck yeah. in there, you warriors. So is that all right? Yeah, uh, yeah I think yeah. so. So yeah. let's call that close enough. Yeah, okay. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The, the difficult terrain is, uh, is, is a factor, I think, that you can jump over. You climb right <laughs> yeah. And people, if you go through someone else, it also passes difficult terrain. Good job. You. Saving through? Yeah. Ooh, nice. Okay, good Very job. Safe. Unfortunately, it doesn't get you anything special, yeah, but no, you feel right. specially like you like you like how it smells. Yeah, like, it's, it's actually nice. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so can I bottle this? Let's look cool. <laughs> I'm gonna move here next to Fogram and cast uh, Cure Wounds. Ah, um, okay, uh, great. Can. So Cure Wounds, uh, I believe, uh, is a plus six, a DA plus six. Yeah, clerics. Let's describe. It, it was doesn't just, actually. I, I, yeah, so uh, yeah, I, I, I have one thing that does it, yeah. One yeah, the plus cheat sheet. Yeah. Plus six. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's the cheat sheet, but again, you'll eventually oh, yes. uh, learn what all your spells do. Yeah, it's on page two. Yeah, I did it as a, as a cheat sheet one. Uh, Woo! Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> all the way back to the top, thank you. All thank right, you. filled up. Oh, I'm looking for a race. Under your card. Okay, good job, Claire. Can I move a little bit forward? Oh, uh, yes, if yeah. you've got squares left, keep yeah, on going. I do, so but I'll just move there. Sure. Yeah. All righty. Well done. All nice. right, Constitution well done. saving throw is 14. Oh, that is enough to resist it. Okay, okay. so I'm going to <coughs> move myself forward and yep. try and attack with my Warhammer once yeah, again. Yeah, good job. That's a good brown um, tree. Oof, seven. Oh, no, the seven. Yeah, you plunge forward, but in the fog, you just can't sight your target fast enough and hits the wall next to it. I was going to say, clang on the wall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, the wall crept up on you. Okay. okay. What do you do? I was going to say, can yeah. I still move? Yeah, you can keep on moving. Yeah, you can choose to get out of the way. To, I'm going to open just up take level. a step back. I yeah, ricochet that's good. Not so far away that it's a free attack against you. Mine. Oh, speaking <laughs> of, of free attack against you, it did. It was holding an attack, and as it came up, it clocked you. So it's done okay. its held action. Uh, it lunges forward with a bite with a 13. I'm 18. sure that's not quite enough against your armor class. It slashes you with a 22, a critical hit. Ah. You get, it just, yeah, you, as a bite, it sort of exposes your neck and then just, just like, ah, oh, it nice. digs right in. It does nine points of slashing damage to you. Oh, I'm out. Like, oh. oh! I'm minus one. <laughs> down, <laughs> down, the cleric goes. <laughs> <laughs> that held action was brutal. Okay, remember, Next time it comes around to this one's turn, death saving throws, you definitely don't want that to happen. You want to get them back up into the fight. So somebody <coughs> should really try to stabilize, keeps them out of the fight. It's a healing spell, healing potion, good berry that brings them up and out. Next. Yeah. Two. We need Plus. the healers. Need them. One. Okay. Three. No, you are affected by the poison. So you're yes. poisoned, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll do it. We'll, Say what happens on your turn as you go. Go for it. Okay. Um, I I'm poisoned, so you can still attack. Oh, okay. Um, but I probably can, wouldn't. Attack. Can you attack from there? Is that yeah, you can attack there. Yeah, you can attack from there. Yeah, the bow. Go yeah. that way around. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, we're back here with the bow. You can maybe swing. If you switch to the bow, you can shoot at this thing. I was going to say, if I was poisoned, I wouldn't really be able to attack very well, but I should probably yeah, I get dice shot. That, right? Yeah, exactly. And then I'll you might get lucky. You've been pretty lucky so far. So you have disadvantage to roll two d20s at the same time because you're poisoned. You have disadvantage. You have to roll two d20s at the same time. Well, the, um, That's what the disadvantage well, the, is. So the the combat advantage ha come in handy here as well again. Combat advantage? Uh, having the uh, combat close to... Oh, uh, that only helps because damage. Because yeah, yeah. So it, it increases the damage if, right it. if there is a mm -hmm. oh, yeah. So you're just affected by the poison. Like a, yeah. Which means you're disadvantaged. So when you're disadvantaged, you throw two of these. Yeah, so just this turn... You take the lowest of the two, plus your attack. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but hey, luck can still save you. Okay, then. I'm going in Swinging the axe. Ooh, see, so unfortunately for this advantage, you have to use two, the two, three, and that's not enough. Yeah, coughing, wheezing, mm -hmm. stinking cloud. You know, you just, <laughs> you're, 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 you can fire is kind of like really weakly, like against the ground. You can just can't, you can't get it, it, it to the coughing properly. Yeah, yeah, too much. Next. Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, 13. Okay, you're all right. Just, um, you said I was at, we we're able to attack from this square, is that correct? Yes, you can, yeah, right, but cool. it's got a little plus two to its AC because of the corner. Yeah, that's right. I'll 
Yeah, we get all of that. Yeah. Uh, Nineteen. Okay, with nineteen. Yep, that's good. Do your damage. Oh shit. <laughs> Great. Roll that, but has it taken enough damage to go down anyway? No, three is not enough. It's still standing. Oh, come on, we got to stack it on. Um, and then, and then, then sorry, because that was, what, two moves? So I'm just yeah. going to go. I'll move out of the way again. Okay, yeah, I'd use this reaction to, to attack, so it can't do the reaction to, to get a free shot at you. That's nice. Ellen. So, D20 to see if I can... Yep. Okay. Um, 12 plus 4, so 16. Very good. Yes, you're fine. Uh, it's time to get stuck in there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can mm -hmm. I do that? Yes. Wonderful. And then I'll use my long bow if I can. Can I go over you here? You can't see it, unfortunately. Bit? So, but but the good thing is that uh, well, you can fire with disadvantage. You know where it is, mm, but you have disadvantage. I'm collapsed on the ground here. Yes, it's true. But it's the fog. It's the fart cloud because you, know, you can't see through it. But you might as well fire just just like we did here. Uh, you can get lucky. Yeah. Take two d20s and fire at the same but time. That's why it's totally I have a healing potion. potion. Yeah. Can I use that? You now? sure can, yeah. That's right. You can use your action Could against you? a comrade. Uh, that's a very good choice. If you're yeah. firing with disadvantage or helping a comrade, I think you're you... actually dead. So yep, dying. Okay, I'm happy to use that. I got that. Hey, good job. Okay, yeah. all right. So you feed yeah, yeah, the healing yeah, in, make sure you cross yeah, that off. Yeah. You roll two d4s. There's a little probably pyramid yeah, there. I probably need that. So <laughs> somebody get a d4, please. Uh, there and there. Yeah. That's an eight. No, no, There's the, the little sharp, sharp pyramid. Yeah, no, That's pyramid. a six. There's a little sharp pyramid yeah. inside. Uh, yeah, four sides. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so right. Add, 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 add them again. And six, two. and then we add two to that, so it'll be eight hit points that you get. Oh. Hey, and you've got eight. Good so job. So even that I technically went to minus no, one. No, you don't go negative. You, okay. you never go negative. You always go down to zero. So you just got it. I was saying three, so all right, at least two and two. No, it was four. Oh, it was four. Oh, no, well done. On the on the dice on this particular. Yeah, that one is too. Yeah, yeah, they're funny to read. That one tricked me last week as well. Yeah, yeah, tricky. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good job, everyone. Next is well, good choice. So you've done that. You're next. Um, I'm gonna move up. Yep. I also gonna do the Constitution. Yeah, I gotta do Constitution. Same throw. Yeah, you're back. Good, yeah, and now the, uh, the 11 is also the number you have to roll to beat the poison, so okay. now, now you know that for sure. Go okay, ahead. Um, and I'm going to make that difficult to drain, not difficult to drain. Okay, smooth it out. All right, great. <laughs> so you're, you've got to get close enough to see it, so, okay. so you've got to get a little bit closer again? there, scaredy cat. Yeah, exactly, keep on moving there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, good, you smooth it out. It's no longer difficult to rain, helping your friends move through. Yeah, yeah you sort of scratch that out. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it tries. Right, next. Okay. Yeah, I'll be rolling as well. Though. Yes, start off with our constitution saving throw. Saving throw, yeah. Right. 11 and 2, 13. Okay, 13 is fine. What Just do you enough. do? Just, Just enough. Just enough. <coughs> so we keep going now. Uh, sorry, yes, uh, that's right. I, I, I keep going around. It's my turn. But these things are basically, wow. you can tell that, that, that they're, no, that's fine. This thing this thing knows better than retreat. It's making a last stand. I saw what happened in the last one retreat. So it's getting, uh, it's just going to attack. I think uh, you're down, Orange Spear. So odd is the Orange Spear. Against you, Orange Spear. Okay. It is going to try to attack you. It bites at you. With a 19, I imagine that hits you. It does. You're bit for three. Okay. His claws is doing a last stand desperately with 10, though, is weakening and it scratches your, against your armor but does not penetrate. So you've taken a little bit of damage. And you hear these things, you know, back there. So this, so now you know there's a few more enemies back there, including whatever Jop Jop's got. So we got to break through. That's all that it does. This thing, is, this thing has done its attack and has decided not to retreat. It's doing a last stand. Now it's your turn. Shall I roll again because I've done um, yeah, 13? Fine. So you, yeah, so you did your 13, that's fine. Yeah. You can keep the last roll you had, so you're uh, not affected by the poison this time. I'm not, and oh. I actually would like to use my longsword to try to get to this. Yeah. Horrible the good thing. thing is you can move through friends. I would like to move, yeah. So be one, two, three, yeah. four, because friends count like difficult terrain. Five, so you can get yeah. all the way through your friends. Exactly. You see how that bottleneck works, but luckily you're right there. See, yeah. every square counts. Yeah. And you can, as you go by, attack this, but you can just keep on going. You can do six, and maybe this thing will attack you, but at least you'll get, you'll get in here. Because you can tell when you're standing that this thing is now finally widened out. So this passage 
There's a large echoing chamber, and you hear jop, jop, and uh, the plops, uh, or the sort of shuffling sounds of the way these things Trying move back there. So can we see this? Again, for some reason. Yeah, it's all filled <laughs> with smoke. It's all, and this so is now smoke. See. Yeah, you still cool. can't see. Yeah, okay. The whole battle is dealing with it. Jop, 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 doesn't she? Oh, ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Usually in combat, combat's all about combat, but we might make an exception for a charisma roll at the critical time. Hey, uh, Tim. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm going to be in the back, so she won't see me. So, yeah. your choice is you can attack this thing that's, that's blocking the way, or you can just go one more square to get a little bit closer to, to, to find your final target. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, go for it. Rule your damage, uh, your, your weapon, as usual, against round three. Twenty. Whoa! Yeah, wow. 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 the natural Finally. twenty. Wow. Whack! So that you can roll sword. that damage die. You roll it twice. So whatever your damage die next to that sword is, it's a long sword, I believe. Roll sword. It was the D eight? Was it? D eight. So roll two D eights because you did Plus natural three. twenty. Yeah. So you roll two D eights and then add three to that total. Fun stuff. So this is what is this? Six. Six. Mm -hmm. And a four. And 14. Oh, 10. And three, 13. Nice. 13, a very nice whack. And it splatters very thoroughly and just you know, it covers you before it all dissolves away. Oh, and the is passage is done. clear. Well and done. And gets traumatized once more. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, now, in, today. You're, now the way is open. Let's see what we can make of it. So, get in there, everybody. Okay, I'll just. You realize it's so echoey that you don't know where Job Job is, so you, the best thing is everybody get in there and uh, spread out. I'll move. Is it still two going? Th if I have to go through the. Uh, but you can just cut through di you can, the di yeah. diagonal cut. Doesn't cost. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go one, one, two, two three. Yeah. And now on the good side. thing now is yeah. we can be yeah. more vague because you're just moving around fog anyway. So I'll start moving around a little bit anyway. So yeah. you, you you get kind of off a little bit. You. You're yeah. trying to fan out the room because you don't you're know where Jock Jock is. is yeah, I just didn't want to get into attack range. I was not having <laughs> you are in attack range or something. <laughs> 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 But no, you just come up against it, like sort of yeah. sort of wandering around as you sort of splat up against it. But it's not like it's held in action, so so it seems like you're. But it, it stops you cold. What do you do now? You, you've, you've, you've hit it. Yeah, good. Um, two plus the. Yeah. Plus oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. A uh, six all up. So yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, Oh, you're, yeah, you're affected Constitution. by the poison. Yes, yes. All right, affected by the poison, but when um, it comes to traveling, I'm, moving, I'm just moving forward, so uh, this yep. stage. Which, so. which one are you? Uh, spear. Okay, yeah. So let's say you start going off here. Yep. Yep. Do a perception roll. So just roll a d20. Uh, yep. And add your perception bonus, which is in that roll there. Um, is uh, 18. Okay, 18. Yeah, so so it's keep follow all of you who rush in. You're going to be following the area of the spear because it seems like you you can hear through the echoes that you think you're getting closer to Jop Jop. So you see me going the right direction, but you haven't found her yet. You know there's an enemy off nearby, over here. But your perception allows you to not have to, to not be able. You can see it, and you can you can uh, attack it if you like, uh, or you can leave it be. Leave it be. Okay. Yeah. So trying to avoid these things now because you're really going after a target. Who God knows how many of these things there are. Your turn. All right. Uh, saving through. Yep. A team. Okay. So it's fine. Uh, Maybe 13 plus your constitution bonus, by the way. But yeah, we'll but it was 11. Is, yeah, 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 okay, cool. Um, and then, so... Yeah, so the uh, where, where are you here? Uh, yeah. That's me? Yeah, so, so, so by calling to us, you think that, that you want to sort of trend off this way. So I'll do it for you. So okay, one, thanks. two, three, four, five. You're sort of moving off this way, yep. right? And you finally are able to see, thanks to sort of following this lead, you can see Jop Jop cooing to her bot. And you have these two things here. These things are on guard, and one attacks you as soon as you come up. And you think you finally found the guard, but this is your whole point. Mm -hmm. And you're charging in with a 16 against your AC. That's not enough. It claws you with an 11. That's not enough. But now you have your target. It's everybody rushing in and trying to get at Jop Jop through these guards. Right. And you're next. Can I? Oh, oh yes. Uh, so attack, uh, that's right. Yeah, you came, came, uh, came across. You can attack one of the two. Yeah. But forward. they're aggressive, right? They're, they're aggressive. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, cool. yeah exactly. Right. They're, they're, they're nasty. Um, They've got their claws out. One attacked you preemptively, you know. Right, okay. Job so. Job is not paying any attention to you. She's cooing to her bot. She's like, yeah, the fear, baby. It's just like she's following the bot, sort of skittering around, and she's just talking to it, totally ignoring it. All right. But well, I'm going to attack this So you can guy. see, like, there's another hole. Like, that's another one of those, these holes that she's torn up and all, like, different sizes around the room. Like, she, she's obviously been tearing these things open in repeated places, and that's where all these, these creatures have come from. Right. 
Okay. Uh, I'm going to use my Warhammer. Yeah, okay, go for it. That's a four. Okay, with a four. Nope, that doesn't work. Next. All right, so constitution throw. Ooh, okay, nice. poison, but uh, we'll if see. If I'm resistant to poison because I'm a dwarf. Yes, you have advantage on poison. It says I was wondering if dwarves would notice that. I just realized now. So yeah, dwarves, you have advantage right. on saving throws against well, poison. Well, we've all so far we everyone's been. That's <laughs> 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 the first one. It's so always good we have advantage to roll two dice at once. It's more fun. So, uh, so what does that? Entail for me. Like Just roll again. Roll so again. so okay. every time you roll this saving throw of dwarves, roll two d d20 at the same ah. time and take the higher of the two. Okay. Uh, well, nine plus um, two is eleven. Eleven? So okay, I'm yes, barely enough to resist it. Okay, what do you do? Yeah. Okay, oh. so I'm here and I'm going to, yeah. Yeah, so follow it, the action. Well. Okay, so one, two, three. Roll a perception check, please. Um, yes. Oh, 12. Oh, with a 12. So as you're trying to pursue, which one? You're, you're this this orange one? That, yeah. That move you? Yeah, so as you're trying to hit the action, you come across one of these that's waiting for you, mm -hmm. and it's sort of blocking you. It claws out at you with a 19. Oh, just. Oh, you get slashed by his claws. Oh, for seven. Oh, that man. might be enough to eat dead again. No. Nope. I'm one. Oh, I'm one. Okay. <laughs> Better not die. Uh, <laughs> it lunges at you with a bite, but you're able to fend it off. So you sort of stumble and like you put your shield up, and his, his teeth are taking chunks out of it. You're barely surviving. Ah, oh, bad yep. luck. You're the only one that can heal. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Oh, you didn't have a healer. And then use some. Oh, yes. last, right. last, okay. yeah. Yeah. Your figure here is that that's fine. Yeah. Actually, I could probably cure myself next round. <laughs> you can yeah. cure yeah. thyself. Nine. Nine. So. <laughs> I, 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 I did yeah. last time. <laughs> <laughs> I think I healed. That's a lot. So I don't get Okay. So. You can get that, close to these enemies, but you can't. You can't attack. You can just do nothing but run, and you'll be right up against okay. Jop Jop and no the demons. Do you want to get stuck in and be ready to attack next time? Do you want to be in the mix? Yeah, why not? Yeah, all right. So you come up over there. All right. Let's go. As thing does, it was holding an attack. It bites out at you with a three. Oh yeah, you were able to step back. You saw that danger. It's claws. It steps forward and claws at you, but then you step back a little bit more, and again, whiff, whiff, whiff. So you're able to evade all that okay. as you go. But you can't attack because you ran so far. Uh, yeah. that, that's the, yeah, that's yeah, the end of your turn. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Oh, all right. That's so that's. Well, I get to roll two. Yep. And that's no better. Uh, nine plus oh, no, that is 11. Yeah, yeah actually, okay. Yeah, so you make it. Move. All right, great. Um, so are we just indiscriminately moving on this? Yeah, exactly. There, You're following through the there. Yeah. Um, does it doesn't matter if you roll perception because you can tell from the sound that now all the enemies are exposed. One, two, three. Well, so four, five, six. So you can't unless you want to attack this thing. But I think no, people no, are saying you're just dodging, yeah, going for it. So you can get, you can move basically next to either of these guards if you want to, yeah. or you can hang back. Uh, yeah, sure. Look, I'm gonna put myself. Yeah, just we're being a bit loose here. Yes. Okay. Good. All right. Starting to form a wall, and uh, yeah, the guards are protecting her, but you can still maybe get around eventually. Just couldn't quite make it. What do you do, Ellen? Oh. All swarming do I have in. To do my Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. You're affected nine. by the poison, but maybe it won't matter this turn. What are you going to do? You're here? Yeah, I'm happy to move in. Two, three, as much four, as five, I six. Yeah, you can't quite see, so you can put yourself kind of you know, a couple squares away from <coughs> where it stands, about as far as you can go. Put yourself in the action like and position that you think. Yeah, exactly. So, what do you think is a good position? Can uh, I attack? Get in for the big finale. No, you can't see your targets. Oh, so, okay. uh, and, uh, so you, you could attack this thing if you wanted to, because you can see it. Yeah, that's what I was hoping. Oh, sorry. I moved you 12. Like, you were all the way back here, so you had to do nothing but run. Oh, okay, yeah. You can yeah. move twice as far if you don't attack, that. and that's why I applied there. Go for it. Uh, eight. Okay. Choking. No, plus your constitution. Eight, nine, ten. Ten, ten. not enough. Two, okay. Three. So, your poison might not matter. What yeah. are you going to do? What's your strategy? Uh, I'm moving up here. Uh huh. And I'm wondering if I can create um, an area around here to just stop a uh, flanking maneuver if they yeah. kill the wall. Sure, sure. And, and how, what are you casting to do that? Uh, Grease. Ooh, okay, great. So you concentrate a spot. Uh, I'm, I'll, let's see if it's a spot you can see around. It has to be right nearby. You might have to grease yourself. Make the ground all greasy. Yeah, grease, yes. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, no, Hill, see this yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So this just says a point within range, and range is 60 feet. And thanks to your yeah. friends, of course, you, you kind of know the location of everything in here, so you can okay. definitely grease, you know, this spot here. Can I but grease you, Job Job? Yes, you can actually <laughs> grease over there. Grease Job Job. Ah, yes. all right. So 
You just you can tell from where your friends' voices are. You pick a spot that's right by Jop she Jop. Like You're going to try to make <laughs> you can try to make it so Jop Jop and her guards do it. This is so far, and your friends are calling out. Do a quick perception check to see how accurate you are. I know ideally you only want to get uh, you only want to get Jop Jop and the guards, but if you don't roll well, 13, you might be off a little bit. 14, 15, 16. Oh, nice! Yeah, you target it quite nicely. So it's a ten foot radius. And you managed to basically take a big greasy spot. <laughs> All that, and uh, what does Grease do? So, it turns into difficult terrain. When it appears, each creature standing in the area must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or fall prone. So, let's see if these guards and if a, cre a creature that enters the area or ends its turn there must also succeed. So, it's very, very slippery. Let's see. Number one. Okay, this is against your spell DC. It can't be that high. So, number one does not fall. Okay. You spell DC is spell mentioned up there. Save. DC is 13. Okay. Oh, number two sort of wobbles but doesn't fall. This is Jop Jop. Ah, Jop Jop falls because your DC is what? It's, it's not nine. It's 13. much higher. 13. That's pretty high DC. She, so she's like, all right, baby. So it's like, come on, get that shard. Whoa! She sort of falls and her face just plants like onto, onto the spider. And the spider's claws, like they start digging into her face. It's like, no, no, baby, no, no, not me, not me. And it seems like this bot, because you've just planted her, so you've managed to make her slip into it. She's really terribly distracted. She's not only prone, but she seems to be like getting clawed up by this thing. It's very the brilliance. I wouldn't have expected this, but that's, I'm just sort of playing it as it is. If she falls face first in this mining bot, what else do we expect? <laughs> okay. That's We're going to do some just general mayhem here and see who survives. Is there anybody down and dying? No, not quite. So these things are all going to go for whoever's closest. Not <laughs> quite. Yeah. So this thing over here, Close to death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to rotate around sort of in all this, all this possible things. It's going to go for you with the uh, bow, the pink bow. Uh, goes up and it's going to try to attack you. All right. It bites at you with an 18. Mm -hmm. I imagine that's enough with your leather armor. Five points of damage as you get bit. It claws at you. 22, that's a critical hit. Oh. Oh, I rolled a 20. You take 12 points oh. of damage. Oh, that's oh so we have someone down. She needs yeah, to be rescued. Oh, it's your motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. It might be a little bit left. Right on, right on. The green axe, okay. The you the green axe is going to get clawed for with a four. That doesn't do anything. Yeah, you have to do it. You the green axe, you get bit with an 11. Who's the green axe? Must be a strong one. An 11 won't do anything against you. Number three. We're going to go for one of these two targets, higher versus lower. It's going to be uh, you with the orange and the lock. I believe that's you. Oh, lock. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. If, if you're checking your phone, I'm up for it. That's an 18 <laughs> against you. So you get bit. You get bit for six points of damage. Well, oh, you've got, you got no, you, yeah, six. I have no, yeah, I got yep. All right. Somehow. But the claw is coming at you. Nope, that's an 11. So you skip out of the way. All right. So you got three. Yep, so go and subtract the six hit points from your maximum and put your new yeah. maximum or your new hit points down there. That was number three. Such fun. Uh, this brown one is going to go for one of these two shields here. Odd is up there. Yep, it's going to take the pink shield. Which one is you? Okay, <laughs> lucky you. You get clawed with a 17, oh, but your armor class is 18. 18. Oh, your shield yes. blocks it. Okay. It tries to bite you. With a 10, no, you push it back with your shield. That's okay. We have the two gray ones. Uh, it's going to go after Pink Book. Whoops. Oh, yeah, that's hidden. Uh, well, I, I don't know why I rolled it, but I'll take the 20. That's great. 20. So who's Pink Book? Me. You. I'm going to, I'm just going to roll it the old-fashioned way. So I'll do a D6 here. That's two plus, oh, one, <laughs> oh, three points of damage against you, Pink Book. And its claws go again with a 16, which is not enough to hit you. So you take three total. And number two, we already did number one, number two. Yeah, Pink Book? No. Oh, no, this one over here. Yeah, the only one that can attack is Pink Shield. You're nice and close. All right, Pink Shield. With a 20, not a natural 20, not a critical hit, but I rolled a dirty 20. That hits, yep. Yeah. You take six points of damage. Oh, just, oh, oh just alive. Oh, God, we're both on one. Yes. <laughs> and I rolled a 16, but your armor class is 18. Oh, you are just hanging on to oh life. God. You're almost there, but fighting it off. Oh, this is a final stand. But Jop Jop is there. Does she have one health? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, took sorry. Six yeah. 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 Yeah
Now your choice is, do you try to route the demons and you'll pro they might fight back, they might you know, do things to damage you, but you'll at least stop them from going up and you can st start chopping them down? Or do you let them go knowing that these demons are going to be on the landscape? How heroic do you feel? We're all pretty you? beat up. We've got three people effectively dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. There's, six, there's six of them. So Stick for us to yes. yeah. them, that would probably be Let's, several yeah. of that turns to Let them go, yeah. Yeah. I say. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they're Could we take an option just to try? Yeah, yeah, the middle path. So one path is like, we don't want to take any more damage, right? We're going <clears> to <throat> all back off. Yeah. That's one option. Option number two is we're going to do everything short of die. You know, we're not going to die, but we're going to we're going to reduce all of ourselves down to one hit point if necessary to do and take as many demons out as possible. But we think we'll survive and be very badly wounded in terrible shape. You know, you've already done your short rest, so if there's another fight, you feel vulnerable. But you know, this also looks like at least if you clear out these things, this might be a place to do a long rest, as far as you can tell. Right? Mm -hmm. That's for me to know and for you to find out. Yeah. Like maybe you're at the end of your sort of arc and this is the end of the urgency. So yeah, you can all reduce yourself down to just maybe one hit point each with all of your fighting, but somehow survive, bloodied and battered, and hopefully do a long rest and nothing else will attack you today, but you'd be very vulnerable if they do. The middle, uh, or, or somewhere in between those two extremes, like, oh, okay, well, well, we'll try to take out as many demons as possible without getting that bad. So between the two extremes, of you're going to stay completely safe, maximum demons to the surface, you're very, very damaged, short of death, but minimum number of demons to the surface, sort of on a scale of one to 10 between those two, uh, let's say those two extremes are somewhere in the middle, right? One, two, or three. Think about what you want to do. Discuss amongst yourselves. So one is you're completely safe. Mm -hmm. Two, three is is you know kill kill demons is the is the nice thing here. But you'll be very vulnerable. And two is just somewhere halfway in between. Discuss. We're already pretty vulnerable. Mm -hmm. With mm -hmm. you can't do any spells. Mm -hmm. We're both on one hit yeah. point. You're out for the count yeah. as well. Mm. So and save our strength. Yeah. Save yeah. our strength. I was going to say, some, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that the rest, some of the rest of you have also got like limited spell slots mm -hmm. left as well. We can throw javelins at them. But yes. Yes. Well, why don't we just try and take as many as we can without dying? Yeah. I mean, I'll, that's probably going to have a follow-on, so whatever the next portion is. Yeah, that's good. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to have a bit of a gamble that's and that's say that's that Matt's it. probably going to give us a long rest after this. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's either that or we'll, 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 find out. We'll, we'll, we'll all be throwing can, death saves. Can we get a little bit of this one then? I was going to say, are we yeah, all going to make it to the long rest or how many more of us are going to drop off along the way? We won't gain anything from They all dissolve. There's no loot from them. So why is the benefit of it? you like characters? I see that. Yeah, we'll go to the next battle there. It's less than just... Yeah, yeah, yeah good point. will we encounter yeah. them in the yeah. next Can battle? we just fire at them yeah. as they At some point, but say right really now, we're that's sort of risk it for yeah, right now. I'm just doing high level, right? We're yeah. not going to play it out with die rolls. We don't have time. And, yeah. you know, this is too... It's too it's, we can do this at a high level thing, right? <coughs> so just on the general extreme of be as safe as possible on this side, kill as many demons as possible, be extremely on the verge of death, and hopefully you'll have a long rest on this, or this is just somewhere in between. Well, in between, chuck a couple of javelins, throw it, shoot a few arrows, uh, yeah. but protecting yeah. the others yeah. as well. So, yeah. 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 Well, while while they run away. Blow a bit of fire yeah. and things yeah. like yeah. that. <laughs> just kind of kill, like... Chase them away. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Just do what we can yeah. to, like, yes, yeah. make them scared of us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As, they, as they sort of, yeah. yeah. Run. But don't freeze <laughs> more lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Don't, don't, yeah. Go yeah. Don't, don't go to your absolute minimum sort of no. health and vibe. Yeah. Okay. Is that a consensus? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't really have to say. Oh, yes. Who's down and dying? Who's doing death saving throws? Is anyone doing death saving throws? Like, I've got nothing left. Yes. So you're at zero? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is, is is somebody going to heal her or yeah, stabilize her? If they stabilize her, she'll be out for three or four hours. She'll come back with one hit point. I can have heal. a healing spell. Okay. okay. Go on, do that healing spell. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, actually, actually, I should I stabilize her. No, no, she yeah. should save your heal. Yeah, you should. Okay. Take well, again, it's a choice. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And whatever yeah. happens, she'll be unconscious for one to four hours unless she gets healing. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, a long rest will bring her back as well. Yeah. She'll stabilize. Yes. Stabilize her, but not use a spell? Okay. 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 <laughs> we need those spell slots. <laughs> 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 All right. Okay. Yeah, that's the other You one. take yeah. stock, you do that, some fights break out, you take some more damage and all that, but I'm not going to say how much damage you do because you quickly realize after this done that things seem calm. Yes. Chop Chop is captured and nothing can come through the silver crack. You look, there's no other way in there. There's <coughs> weird slimy tubes. You know, some things can come back down the tubes, but the demons wanted to leave. It doesn't look like normal things can come down. You can just tell if like, you taste it's like, oh, that's like a 
acidic, <laughs> right? Or like acid. <laughs> yeah, it's like nobody's going to come down He's there casually. Why? And, the, <laughs> and the silver crack is like, well, not many people can do what we do. You figure you're safe here. You go to that beautiful lounge, all the cushions and the hookahs, oh, and yeah. you're able to, after a little while, you realize, oh, we can do a long rest. So... <laughs> Really Don't worry about all the damage you take. Don't worry about the spell slots you spent because you will be getting a long rest when we start over. But, like any adventurers, you want what? What do you ask the DM for? Mm -hmm. Loot and XP. Loot and XP, exactly. Okay, so. I'd like to just mention that I'm devastated that I missed the end. I wake up and I'm like, oh, I missed the end. Yeah, did we win? I'm like, guys, you should have killed me before. Is this heaven? <laughs> everybody's into this pose. And Why does it yeah. hurt so much? <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, Ellen, there's a slight risk of you know, having stabilizer that if something broke out during the, the long rest, you know, she, she wouldn't be adding to that. She'd be very vulnerable. But a few hours, like in the middle of the night, you're like, <gasps> yeah, you sort of wake up with one hit point. So give yourself one hit point. You stay over, uh, having been stabilized. Yeah. <laughs> give me that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Everybody else has got to breathe. I won't give the long yeah. rest. I won't give the benefit of long rest yet because I have something to explain about long rest. So don't enact the long rest yet. But you think this is a safe place, you know, I might. Maybe someone will attack you just in the morning, but, but uh, you, so far it's safe enough. You think you've made the right choice. Just to review, you've kept the alliance with the kobolds, though, you know, they lost a little bit of respect for you for not uh, aligning with the black dragon. You're able to spend things there. I will send a link on how you can shop with the kobolds. You can use your money, sell things to them if they're interested, if it's the kind of stuff they're interested in buying, and buy. Look online for that. It'll be in Meetup and also be in Discord. Do consider joining Discord. I've posted a link to it and one of the QR codes on the front. And there's an URL on the very front of your original character sheet that has Discord. Definitely advise that because I, 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 send, I send information both ways. Um, I don't usually like make people do things in between, but you, know, you don't have to buy equipment. But if you want to buy equipment, you, you'll want to do that in between the two. I'll send you links for that. Shop around a bit. You get some loot. So uh, the good news is that as you go through, you find drawers and boxes. This place is full of various, uh, full of money. She has been collecting and hoarding money. So Jewels, cool. money, yeah. magical items, <laughs> items that like, oh, sure, this magical item. So next session, you're going to split up a hoard of loot. This happens oh, nice. about once per level. You generally find a hoard of loot. Mm -hmm. So uh, you'll come in for that. You immediately have some loot. Is drugs. If you like to write down drug pipe, yeah. So that can be a bong, that can be a pipe. Yeah, you can get this Is someone as well. stashing it into Yeah, no, <laughs> when you wake up, you do that as well. Uh, and jop jop drugs. So just jop jop drug pipe and jop jop drugs. You know, leaves of some is sort. O or A? Uh, jop jop is J O P. So jop, hype, and jop. So you can do jop jop pipe and jop jop drugs. <laughs> She has that fancy silver visor. If you want to have a fancy silver visor, roll a and, d20 and you, right and now. I already have one. <coughs> that's, that's you. Roll, roll a d20 if you want to shot a the silver one. visor. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, it's the fancy. Seven. <laughs> what is it, a d20? Yeah, d20. It's a plain d20. Uh, 18. 18. 18. Hey, okay. 18. 18. Who's higher than 18, anybody? Anybody? Not I. Okay, so write down silver visor. Uh, uh, jop, fancy. jop. You know, jop, jop, silver visor. There's a lot of angry bots, so you find some of these drawers, like these sort of glowing red bots that seem to be infused with like the emotion of anger. <laughs> and they think, oh, these must be the sort of the guardian bots that the kobolds told us about. So you think that you can help protect your kobold allies by, you know, sort of, you know, you'll ferry them out through the silver crack once you're well and it's deploy them. This is the thing that Dak Dak said, oh yeah, if you find things, you know, she can deploy those. For some reason, she doesn't usually do it, but if you convinced her, and you can tell by the expression on his face, like, you think that he knows, like, did you... Convinced Chop Chop, we're like, oh yeah, we're convinced. Just like, <laughs> he, he seems to know. He killed her. Um, so you, they're not suitable for mining, but they can defend the kobolds. Do you want to deploy those, or do you want to keep them for yourself? So it'd be, it'd be useful to keep them for yourselves to use a little bit. They're not super powerful, or you can do what they want, which is give them to the kobolds to deploy. Well, if we don't give them to the kobolds, then. Whatever the other the, the gnolls might attack. Gnolls yeah. might get rid give, of them. Give them to the kobolds. Okay. It, it'll spot Everybody agree? Everybody, everybody, everybody protest? Mm -hmm. Friendship. Mm -hmm. it's, I'd rather it's keep one. It's just more doing. Uh, I've got, I've got, got kind of a curry 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 network, curry. perhaps. Yeah. 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 you got to go all the I like, I like strong <laughs> I like, uh, like strong decisions. Okay. It's good. We That was that was nearly the end. We're going to end by 9.30. The last thing is experience points. You get 100 XP, everyone. Oh, cool. 300 gets you to level 2. So I believe that gets you to most of you to level 2. If you've missed some sessions, you're not quite there yet. So add 100 XP on the card. 
Well, yep, on the card. Mm -hmm. On the card, added to your total. Yeah, yeah. Right. and it continues. Yeah. So you just keep adding. So so you know, 350 means you're 50 yeah. way. You're 50 yeah. is the way to the next level. So you keep adding up after that. So you're already partway to level three. I will send around a link about how to be level three. You can read on the very back of your sheet uh, how to do level three. Level, level two. two. Level two. You can read, yes, level two. You can read on the very back of your sheet how to do level two. I'll send out a link if you want to use D&D Beyond to, to level up and distinguish yourself more, to you know, make yourself customized. Come early if you're interested. Uh, if from 5 o'clock onward, you're welcome to come for any kind of character work, and I'll do that. So this D&D Beyond, we can print out more like sheets like this. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, awesome. yeah, you can do that, and it, it does that next. Okay. Next time, I normally ask, but next time uh, is a great time for investigation. So there's going to be some chance for action, some chance for some decisions, but this is where you get to answer questions and use your software uh, skills to figure out what the hell's going on. There's so much to investigate. You have so many questions. We're going to do a module all about investigating, maybe getting into trouble as you investigate, so some danger. But a lot of it is, like, think of the mysteries that you each personally, especially in pairs, We'll probably pair up if we have the same people. What's a question you really want answered? Mm -hmm. Or what there's something you want to affect the world? You want to build the world, affect the world in some way, you know? Uh, so I'll give more examples there. But if there's one thing that you and, and a partner want to do together to answer a big question or affect the world around you that you've seen in some big way, think of that. You might discuss that now or at the pub. Uh, feedback forms. So I'm still tallying all the stats on those feedback forms. Just yeah, fold it, leave it on the table. Because uh, it really helps me improve the content. Do we still label this? I hope you enjoyed watching us teach Dungeons and Dragons to absolute beginners. Want to know more about how we do it? Then support our nonprofit mission. Unlock extensive how to videos and use the Courage and Chaos method yourself by using free materials that we provide. You can get all that at the link that you see here. That is tinyearl.com slash teachdd, or you can click that link in the description. Of course, please like, share, and subscribe. We're going to come out with these videos every two weeks in this series, so I will see you again soon.